2014. Uh, this meeting is being recorded. And we want to take a moment of appreciation for our brave servicemen and women that are serving in Afghanistan. Thank you. And I'd also like to make a note to of, uh, a passing and stuff. Uh, Andy Thompson, uh, Ann's uh, husband, passed away early uh, Sunday morning. So just make a note of that. Uh, great guy. Um, uh, contributed a lot to the town and uh, was always a lot of fun to be around. And uh, so i uh, going to miss him quite a bit. Um, we've got a packed agenda tonight. Um, we were going to have the Lyme Disease Committee here at 7 o'clock. They're not here yet. So we'll... Uh, We'll tackle that when they come in. Um, Mark Sorrell is here um, in the town council. We do have a couple of things maybe that we can cover with, with Mark. Oh, there's Chris there. Okay, we'll cover with Mark maybe first, and you can um, kind of go through that. So, um, Mark, do you want to go ahead and cover a few things first yeah. and stuff like that that you've got for us? A couple of votes. We need to take up. The first is an extension on the purchase and sales agreement on Redgate. Uh, uh, Realty, the uh, Kenny Land. It's essentially a 60 day extension, uh, which is probably an interim measure, but uh, I would ask that you uh, vote it and sign it so that I can uh, transmit it to their attorney for their signature. Uh, this is being done, as you know, because the uh, developer has brought suit against uh, the Kennys and against the town. Uh, we are looking at a uh, the case is brought in the land court in Boston. Uh, we're, we're looking to uh, pursue essentially a, uh, an amicable route as opposed to um, the attorney running into court uh, and, and trying to get an injunction to, uh, to freeze the uh, proceeding. So we have a, at the moment we have a case management conference for mid-March, and at that time we probably will also try to get uh, hearing on the preliminary injunction that he's seeking. Uh, I hope so that the court will deny the preliminary injunction, and at that point we may well be able to go forward and close uh, on the transaction, even though the case has not been completely resolved. But we'll have to take it a step at a time. Okay. Now, Pete, would you like to call for a uh, vote on that? I would uh, move that we uh, extend the uh, PNS for 60 days as uh, presented. In a second. All in favor? Aye. Yep. Thank you. We'll just sign that here, too. And, Mark, you said there's no uh, risk that we will exceed the time period in which we can uh, act on, uh, on the uh, no, presentment. No, the, stat the statute specifically provides for uh, the parties to uh, enter in extensions. Otherwise, the statute requires a closing within 90 days of the uh, PNS, uh, unless the parties otherwise agree. Okay. And Anything the only else? other matter is uh, there was uh, the uh, annual town meeting warrant. There were a couple of items that uh, one in particular was the uh, prohibition on public consumption of marijuana. Uh, Pete had provided a uh, prototype, which in fact is very similar, if not identical, to what I had from that had actually been enacted, including in Milford. And the question I had, the, the prototype provides a flat fine of $300 per offense, which is the maximum you can have under a local bylaw anyway. And the question was whether you wanted to have a fixed amount, that amount, or something lesser or you wanted to do on a progressive basis, in other words, first offense, second offense, third offense, third and subsequent offense. Uh, okay. That's basically a policy decision we need to know in order to properly draft the uh, warrant article in motion. Okay, all right. So we just need to decide on that so we can get those, right. put that into the into the yard. And I don't know yeah. if anybody has anything else uh, that involves me as far as the annual town meeting uh, warrant goes. Uh, there was some talk about the stretch code. That's that I gave Mike a copy of Medway's. It's basically a look, it'll be a general bylaw that adopts a stretch code. It doesn't go into the zoning bylaw. Yeah. So. Okay. Excellent. Okay, good. Thank you. Those are those signed copies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, there you go. Sure. No problem. 
Did, uh, can I just ask on the on that three hundred dollars? That's per offense. Each time it would remain three hundred dollars, whether somebody first offense, second offense, third offense. First of all, in order to qualify for non-criminal disposition, which is a ticketing, you have to have a fixed amount. You can't have an up to in the bylaw. So therefore, your options are either a fixed amount, whatever, or what's done sometimes is, is a progressive where the first offense is either a warning or a small amount, and then it goes up to third and subsequent. So you could say 50, 100, 150 mm -hmm. as an example, but again, it's whatever uh, you folks feel. Does but, but this oh. one you had from Milford was a flat 300. No, no, uh, no. Pete came up with a prototype from somewhere. That's a, that had as a model a flat 300. The, the one that I had uh, found, well, I had two. I, there was the Needham one, and then there was one from the state. Um, and the state one had the flat $300 uh, amount. I think Milford's is only $50 each time. I mean, it's, it strikes me. I, I thought that your idea, Mark, was uh, logical to have it be uh, increasing amounts. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what you suggested, yeah. 50, 100, 300, something like that. Yeah, yeah Needham's got $50, it looks like, yeah, is per offense. Go up? No, this is just a flat fee, it looks like. I mean, yeah, what you're Needham. trying to do is is, uh, is to get people to comply mm -hmm. rather than you're not looking to make money out of it. You're just looking to get compliance. Yeah. But oh, by man. having a staggered yeah. set of penalties for, for subsequent yeah. violations, um, then you do... I would hope encourage them to comply. If yeah. if you it's do like with the dog licensing, yes. we don't want to be fining people for dog licensing, but we don't want to be spending any time chasing them to get them to license their dogs. I mean, that would be mm. easy enough to do too. Yeah. I mean, it probably makes sense. Mark, if you do that. if you do staggered fines, does that reset each calendar year? Again, it's a matter of how you draft it. It can be per calendar year, or it could simply be forever. So it would go, yeah. say, 50, 100, 300, and then your fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh would be 300? Yeah. yeah. Or you could reset it each year. I think the dog thing, doesn't that reset every year for violation this of the lease law? This is the kind law. of thing that I don't see why you would reset it. I can see where you would do it progressively, but if, if somebody's just not going to get the message. Right, you don't want to keep resetting. Just keep going. Yeah. Chief, do you, do you have any position on that? Okay, I'll ask the obvious. What are you talking about? Oh, public, <laughs> public, <laughs> no, public consumption yes. of marijuana, like setting fines, levels of fines. You're talking about like it's, it's, a, first it's offense, a town meeting. It's offense. a town meeting warrant article that's been proposed yeah. that's similar to the uh, the public consumption of alcohol by. Uh, I was going to say whatever you. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, whatever you do with the public consumption of alcohol, we ought to just make it similar so it tracks the same way. I would think. I, I wouldn't suspect you'd want to make it sense, um, right. different, keep it consistent. Oh, that's a good point. Um, what does that read now, as far as alcohol? I, uh, is it, it goes up? I don't know. We'll, uh, I don't we'll look know. it up. Sounds like a good trivia question for the high school <laughs> trivia night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, like, what are the different fines? Yes, yeah. Watch out, does the sort of make up the questions? <laughs> Well, that's probably why he asked, so he could get the answer for this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> trivia contest. I'm writing it down right now. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's in there. Yeah, I'm going to have to strike that question out. <laughs> <laughs> else put in there now. The Thompson team will have to disqualify itself. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just think the chief makes a good point. Whatever yeah. the alcohol I think, is, yeah. probably All right, so we can, we'll do too. some research on that. Probably it should be the same. Good, I think that makes sense, yeah. Public drinking. Oh. $200. Flat fee. Yep, there you go. Right. Okay. That's an expensive beer. Yeah. <laughs> Which would probably encourage the police not to ticket for it, I would assume. All right, well, we'll take a, uh, yeah, we'll, um, we'll just discuss that, but I, I think it probably makes sense unless we have any changes to, to try to do so yeah, the sheets. There's provision in here that it's not exceeding $200, and those, there's inconsistencies within that bylaw. Mm -hmm. so. Those are being taken care of. Yeah. All right. So we're here. All righty. Um, so, Chris, you're here. Yeah. Lyme disease, yes. You can give us an update? Yeah, excellent. Sure. Nice to see you all. Thank you. Um, I'm here to give you an update on the fall season mm -hmm. uh, of 
healthy Lyme disease committee's hunting program mm -hmm. and I'll say a few words and then Frank has um, some things to add we feel once again we've had a successful safe no com actually no complaints uh, to the police or directly regarding the season we added hunters this year so that our um, group added up to about 45 hunters mm -hmm. and the uh, good news we feel is we called 41 deer mm -hmm. total as opposed to last year was 29 and the year before 27 so um, it's uh, was a, a successful hunt yeah. all around in terms of um, numbers and uh, lack of issues sure. let's put it that way um, we once again had people thank us for doing this effort and um, I'm trying to think what else I can say uh, there and Frank will comment on a couple changes he's looking for toward next year uh, to make it even uh, more effective mm -hmm. and um, also asking a bit of our hunters as well to be part of the program. Right. So I'll let Frank speak. Okay. Go ahead. I don't think we're asking for a lot of changes, but yeah. one thing that came up last year was still dealing with the illegal hunting yeah. in town. And we work really hard to, to try to catch the people doing it and mm -hmm. get them out of town. Yeah. Um, one thing we would like, and I, I thought we already had this, but anybody who's hunting on town property, we would like to have to make sure that we have the sole authority to grant the permits for that mm -hmm. we're getting you know there's been several instances one was a 4-h club yeah. where they gave permission for people to hunt on the land behind there and it, it, it's not part of their lease but you know I, I think they were just it was in goodwill but right. It just caused a lot of problems for us because we had people already assigned there and it wasn't on their property and yeah. you know we had to move a few people out so yeah and you know we've had other issues where somebody talked to so-and-so who said yeah I don't see a problem with you hunting there and so why don't you do it and then mm -hmm. it's kind of a quasi permission yeah. and I guess I'd just like to make sure that all town departments or whatever mm. that if somebody's looking to hunt on town property, that they have to go through us. So we yeah. just know who's there. Right, for safety purposes as well, obviously, as well as everything else. Yeah. And really control over things. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. 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 I would um, that we make that change. Yeah. Second that? Uh, yeah. I, was, I certainly second that. Yeah. Yeah. All in favor? Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the other thing we would like to do is to do a limited amount of posting mm -hmm. on town property. Right now, we put up signs that say limited bow hunting permitted okay. through the Lyme disease uh, study committee. Mm -hmm. There are some places we would like to put up some no trespassing signs, mm -hmm. or, or not no trespassing, but no hunting signs, then in small letters say without a permit oh, from the board. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. it's, uh, and, and we don't want to plaster these all over town. There's just certain spots that we, we run into this all the time down by the uh, Stop River and again mm -hmm. over by the Charles River off, off Causeway and, mm -hmm. you know. So I think we'd like to do a little bit of posting. Yeah, no, I think that makes, makes yeah. perfect can, sense too. Can I too. ask on the, on, the, on the permit process, is there um, a, a form they have to fill out, a fee that somebody has to pay? How does that work? We, we don't charge anybody because when you charge people, you create a, a liability for especially for private property owners um, if they allow people to do it for free there's no liability there's a statute that deals with that so we don't charge anything um, when we give the permits out this right now we're at 45 and I, I would assume that most of those folks are coming back um, so that they would be granted a permit for next year and then we would fill in with any new people I'm not sure at this point we're ready to go much higher as far as the number of people. And, and what's on with the permit that somebody gets? It gives all their information and everything else is on that. You would then grant that 
and you have a record of, of, of yeah, they fill out an application. We take the application, and then Chief Maney does the background checks on everybody. They go to the trustees over in Dover and do a proficiency test. Then if they're selected, they get ID cards, one for the dashboard of their car, so any, anybody can see what, why it's parked there, one they carry on, the per, on their person, and another one they attach to their tree stand. Perfect, yeah. So that they're well identified. We don't put as much information like license numbers right, and yeah. stuff on them anymore because it just came to, became too cumbersome mm -hmm. to do that. But they're well identified. No. So no. these other people that uh, were just kind of going up, they didn't have a permit? They didn't have a permit. Okay. And, uh, but they were, you know, I mean, they just say, well, I've hunted here for 20 years and, or so-and-so said I could hunt here. and. But that, that means they weren't checked by the chief. They didn't have this test. And this, this sounds much uh, safer and more organized if, uh, through your process there, that you have the record. Um, oh, yeah, we know exactly tested. who's there. Uh, that, Mr. Chairman, that just sounds much safer to do. Oh, definitely, yeah. Now, yeah. now keep in mind, we don't have control over state-owned land. Correct, right. just the town the, land. Just town land or yeah. private land either. If, if some private person wanted to allow someone to hunt on their property they could oh yeah yeah, yeah. So this is only for town, right. yeah. town but yeah. most people yeah. Yeah. who you know a lot of the bigger private parcels now allow us to kind of run the program on those so yeah. okay. are you sure. able to extend um, additional um, acreage this year from other years yeah you know we had to more than private that, we had more private this year but we're, there are still a number of large parcels in town which that, that was my next point to see if you guys could help us at all um, in, t in two ways. We'd like to send a letter to the private property owners that allow us to hunt on their property now mm -hmm. from you guys, thanking them for participating in the, pro uh, the program. I sure. think that means more to them than yeah. one of us sending a letter mm -hmm. to them. And I think sometimes, you know, it's, uh, that, that would make a difference. Sure. And then any of the other private property owners if anybody has any access to you know to talk with them and mm -hmm. we, you know we've tried in the past and but i think now we have enough history behind the program mm -hmm. that i you know I, I think it's fairly can be considered very safe and, yeah you know great Excellent. and we spend an enormous amount of time time even on private land chasing people around i mean it's you know and I don't think, Chief, you had any compl complaints about our guys? No, just the opposite. They've, they've been very helpful. We had a couple of issues that we had to sort out um, between people around private property. And it, we, we got nothing from them like, oh, well, that's nothing to do with us. So like, yeah, how, how can we help? We want to sort this out because we want the whole program to work. Yeah. So very helpful, very positive. Good. Nothing but complete cooperation from them. Because yeah. cool. those people make us look. Yeah, I'm sure. You know, there's one guy around who actually uh, um, rents spaces on private property, and, and he brings in yeah. people. Yeah. That's his business. Yeah, you pay him, and then he'll provide you a place to hunt. Oh, one more right. thing: we do have a large parcel down behind Wheelock that the town has. It's part conservation, part water department. It's loaded with deer. We're not doing well there. It's an access issue. You, you really can't walk in there mm -hmm. to hunt. There's just too many people in parts of it. Yeah. And we're wondering if there's some way we can get a key to the gate just to get people in or to get a deer out of mm -hmm. there. Um, Isn't that where the big dog walking area is? Yeah, that's off to one side. We, we would be on the, yeah. you know, over, over by the swamp and whatever there. But it's just... By the fields where, the, where they mow? You can yeah, well, we're back the in the pit woods, area, right? Yeah, and we're yeah. back in yeah. the woods, and you know oh, we're not okay. around yeah. the, the yeah. dog walkers. But it's just you know for people to walk in there with bows and camouflage gear on, and yeah. then yeah. you know how can you get a deer out without dragging it up behind Wheelock or yeah. out yeah. to Twenty Seven yeah. without? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. That doesn't look. Yeah, yeah. We try to yeah. kind of want to keep a low low profile, profile, profile like that, we'll and you can't when that yeah. walking. When you're in town hall, sometime, let yeah, come up and we'll talk to Ken. Yeah. Okay, yeah, key. yeah. So. That's not something we would, either Barry or I would have it. We would, yeah. you know, if we took somebody else down there one evening or something, yeah. something like that. Yeah, that would be okay. fine, yeah. But you're right, though, that does make sense, yeah, because you can't be having people, yeah, 
walking all the way through. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah school property. That just yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I'll get all worked out. Yeah. I guess okay. that's it. Barry has just a quick uh, okay. little analysis he's done. Okay. On well, our, uh, Hey, Frank, while you're up, I just have one quick question. When you when we first met with you guys, when you started meeting, you had the state wildlife biologist, I think, come out and talk about the population of deer in Medfield was like 27, 28 per square mile. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, maybe you're not long enough, and I realize it's going to take probably 10 years, but is there any way when a year or two you could get her out to come out again and or, or how do they count what's happening to see if there's any reduction in the yeah I, I deer per square him mile fairly regularly and and you know he tells me we're making substantial progress but it's very hard to come up with an exact count sure they will give you a ton of analysis on it but the bottom line is they you know they really don't know what effect we're having yet mm. but by taking you know I, this year we had 41 dover had about 41 too so in a relatively small area we took yeah 80 plus deer and we've right. taken over 100 over three years so he yeah. said he said that does make it have a big effect on yeah you know on the herd i yeah. i just can't say we brought it from 25 or 7 down right. to yeah the, yeah Okay. Down to 15 or Well, something. if anything, it's not getting worse, which is the more, obviously, you're, you're making some impact, obviously, you have to be. Oh, yeah, I, I think yeah. that, yeah. you know, my calculations, we we're probably taking, you know, close to 10, you know, 10 to 12, eight, maybe 8 to 10 percent of the deer. And it, yeah. at the very least, we're stopping growth. Exactly. And which trying to bring it down. Do. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You know. yeah. Well, no, if we're at 27, um, Deer per square mile, what's the safe or the ideal number of deer per square mile? It's about eight. About eight, and we're yeah. at 27? Yeah. Uh, we, uh, I understand we're one of the highest in Massachusetts, right? Well, we're high. I, I think we're, we're, we're on our way down, but it's, uh, you know. High for a, a populated area, yeah. you know. Uh, yeah, for this type of community. That, I mean, it's sad. Somebody sent me a picture the other day where they have a pool in their backyard with an aluminum fence with the yeah. um, rails. Yeah. And they have one bush back there in a pot. Yeah. And the deer actually forced that open yeah. to get back in there just for that one bush. Yeah. So it's really for, you know, as, as much as we're trying to, you know, work the Lyme disease, you know, to reduce that, it's car accidents and... It's it's a damage they've done to the woods that yeah, it's just you know, things that will yeah. never come back. Oh, so. yeah. yeah, the other the other big benefit I think is the, uh, uh, or the and it was an unexpected benefit in my eyes was the the uh, uh, number of illegal hunters that have been discovered oh, and sure. and gotten rid of in yep. town. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. On that to kind of try to see where we are with the number yeah. of deer. Yeah. Um, the only way I think we could kind of get a good idea was by the number of road kills. Yeah. The deer vehicle accidents yeah. in, in the town. Uh, what I did because I was curious if as if we were actually do did make a dent in the, yeah. in the deer population. I went around to all the towns in this area and got data from the last five years of how many road kills that that mm. town is has yeah. reported um every town around us except for dover which has has a program in 2013 was either their highest or second highest road kill data in, in the last five years mm -hmm. and that's from 10 different towns mm -hmm. that's not just a couple of towns around here yeah medfield um, went from 41 in 2009, 59 in 2010. In 2011, we started the program. Mm -hmm. Went from 59 in 2010 down to 43. 2012, it was 29. And then last year, there was only 18. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Um, like, again, the biologists, I mean, I think that's a real hard. Yeah hard way to, 
to estimate how many deer yeah. we have. Um, but this, yeah, you know, is yeah. a coincidence. I don't know. Yeah. Um, every year they've been reported the exact same way. So, Barry, you're I'm saying that the 10 communities did not have the program. The number of deer killed went up. It was either the highest, the second highest this past it year? It was either the highest or second highest within the last five years was but, 2000. But Medfield and Dover, which have the program, those numbers have gone down? Dover's actually pretty much maintained a steady uh, throughout yeah. their five years. They started the program a year before us. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, they were 41, 46, 38, 38, 41. They didn't, yeah, really they didn't fluctuate much at all, but they're not getting worse. Every other town, every other town around us yeah. had, had a bad year last year. Yeah. So. Good. Hmm. So, I mean, that seems like that, you know, right, just in itself, that's terrific. Just having those, you know. Well, that, that's just an incredible safety record for the drivers here in Medfield. If you're going from 59 uh, in 2010 down to 18, I mean, just for safety reasons, that's, that's a, a great statistic. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and another thing, when, when, I got, when I got some of these statistics, like from Walpole, they gave me, they were the only town that did it. Uh, I didn't approach Medfield. I, I went through the animal control officer in Medfield. But... They gave me a list of exactly what number street address the deer and date yeah. that they were they were hit, and it's in the future if we do want to try to you know reduce those problem areas. I don't know if Medfield has that type of record. We yeah. could actually concentrate more on the yeah. landowners in those areas to to reduce those numbers further. Good. Um, while you're at the podium, I don't know if the selectmen realize Barry is our beaver man. Oh, I don't know. Like <coughs> oh, yeah, so. I don't know. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Talked about it for <laughs> any, any luck this winter, or has it been too cold? No, the beaver, the beaver stay dormant during the winter. In the winter, yeah. They don't dam anything. They don't, yeah. They're not active at all. Oh. They just go from the house to feed right back to the house. So, uh, as soon as the rivers open up in the everything starts to flourish again now. Were you able to take a look, because I know um, a lot of the residents in the Indian Hill, uh, Nauset, that area, had concerns about uh, the Stop River that, that runs in that area. Um, and, and they thought that uh, a little further downstream, uh, there might have been uh, more beaver dams and stuff. Were you able to check that at all? The, I did check that. There is a sizable dam. Um, just down the bank off Pilgrim Lane, uh, the dam is smack dab right in between South Street and Noon Hill Road. Noon Hill Road, yep. And it's it's about I could see three feet of it. I I took pictures of it. I took I you could see about three feet of it, and uh, and it was flooded. So I mean, it's probably about seven feet high. The dam they dammed up all the Stop River and started going out into the marsh. So do you actually break that down? Do you? Um, I can break it down with with a special permit through the health department, yeah. and that's we'll be seeking that in the spring. Excellent. So that's currently there now. It's there now, correct? But it's not being developed, so it's it's as bad as it's going to get till spring. Then in the spring it's going to get worse, and that's when we're going to uh, we're going to apply for another permit. Yeah. You have to go okay. through the board of health. Correct, okay. and conservation, I believe. Yeah, you have to be careful removing the dam, though. You can only take it down bit by bit, because if you take it all down at once, you'll you'll wash out culverts and so much water and pound it. So. Yeah. But, but I think that would be important to take down so it doesn't back, because I know in that area has had uh, problems mm -hmm. before. With the oh, there's been a lot of complaints, yeah. even on the other side of uh, Indian Hill. Yeah. There's a runoff that comes down there. Yeah. I did some trapping for a private party there years ago. Yeah. Are there any other areas you've picked up an increase uh, with the dams? Uh, over by White Street, um, mm -hmm. the old Cronin property. Yep. Uh, I'm not sure who who bought that. Uh, there's there's a lot of beaver out there. That's that's a big problem area. Uh, the the swim pond. That's I think that's taken care of for now. Mm -hmm. But on the the brown property above that, I know there's complaints from them where there's been beaver. In there, yeah. Uh, yeah. But 
I think that's that's about it for now. Okay. okay. So I had one more thing. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, Good, Chris. Okay. Yeah. I, I thought I had something else for Mark Sorrell when he was here, and and I did, uh, and it and it occurred to me as I was listening to your numbers, Barry. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me that this reduction in in vehicle collision should actually get input into the uh, auto insurance companies rating for mid yeah, yeah i was thinking the same thing myself that, that, that i don't know how they Midfield, figure that your, auto, but, yeah. your collision rate should go down um, I, the thing that i had for mark was you know any, that I, I i'm involved in a case there was an accident at the inter intersection of west street and, and 27 and and my clients got hit pushed into the guardrail and the guardrail got bent and the DPW I noticed had to replace the guardrail and I was thinking to, to myself that it would be very easy for the town to make a, a, a claim against the uh, the driver who was at fault to get the driver to pay for that guardrail. Uh, they do in a lot of that. No, I think what they do is they they call a guardrail or fencing company and they come and fix it and they bill the insurance companies right. for it. So yeah, yeah. But I don't know how the insurance rate works. But I was wondering the same thing myself as while we were sitting here thinking about our actuary insurance. Actuary in our office in uh, Newton, who uh, who uh, yeah. worked for the auto insurance company, so he was. In, huh. I'll have to get in touch with him and tell hmm. him that he should drop the rates on Midfield. Yeah, yeah. I'll give him Barry's numbers. Not my telephone number. Right? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Barry. And Chris, you had something? Yeah. 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 Now that you've heard more, I wanted to come back to ask permission for next season, sure. as long as we're all gathered together. Uh, I think we've got a great record, and and mm -hmm. more than yes. so, we'd like to continue to have the program run sure. as it has, and with the slight improvements that Frank suggested. So I'm looking for your um, vote. Is that the word? Yeah. I don't know what the. One more vote if you want, Pete. Uh, can we just? Uh, uh, yeah, you voted last year to authorize the hunting, you know, the uh, program, the long program. That, I would suggest that we just vote to authorize the hunting to go on uh, on an annual basis until we deem otherwise. Deem otherwise. Second. Uh, I'll second that. I, and I just want to also thank you guys. I know there's an incredible amount of time you put into. Uh, this whole program that most people are not even aware of that. So, you know, thank you for all your efforts on that. Yeah, thanks well, so much. I, I enjoy it. I mean, yeah. Barry is not in, from in town. Yeah. I mean, I'm a resident, so there's a real benefit yeah. to me. But, you know, I want this. Barry's a guy who really helps. I you know, couldn't do it without him. Yeah. So we do appreciate it. Really well, he's appreciate he's a townie twice removed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was my other point was to... <laughs> to thank Barry for joining us and, and your being part of the the group and uh, having the knowledge of town that you do certainly is a great asset. So we're, and Frank puts in tremendous numbers of hours as well. So we're fortunate that they want to do this. <laughs> and, so, and so do you. And, well, uh, I'm, I'm not so much in the hunting aspect. Hunting, but you're in the educational aspect, yeah, which is yeah. just as important, too. I'm alerting people through the schools. I know they have that curriculum, yeah, K that, through 12, which is really important, I think so. Yeah. Well, thank you, yes. So all in favor? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's great. Okay, oh, thanks good. So much. Thank you're you. welcome. And, and I think one of the yeah, thanks, Frank. Thank I think one of the other things that, that people might want to know is that is that Barry does business here in town with uh, uh, wildlife problem removals and things of that sort. So if anybody has any issues with that, that Barry is a very good person to to get in touch with about that. Thanks. As Mike mentioned, he's our official town huh. beaver, beaver patrol man. Yes, yeah. Yes, I was kind of <laughs> <laughs> You do any fisher counts? Mm -hmm. no. Not on the list yet. <laughs> We've got both chiefs here tonight. Um, I guess, uh, Bill, you're going to go first? Fire? Fire first? Yeah, seniority. Uh. <laughs> first budget is uh, administration. Yep. That. Really, the only it's a minor increase of $300 that covers my. Uh, subscription for the NFPA codes and standards. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, other than that, it's a, a level fund. Level funded. Okay. And my rescue and uh, the uh, operations mm -hmm. portion, um, there was an increase, uh, my salary increase of 
19,167 mm -hmm. and really what that covers is our current contract obligations mm -hmm. uh, step raises vacation and longevity increases mm -hmm. um, I do request a uh, increase of two thousand dollars on my equipment repair and maintenance budget uh, this seems to be the cost of things just keep increasing in that area mm -hmm. um, same with gasoline you never know what what day of the week that the mm -hmm. rates are going with gasoline yeah it's crazy well, it's, but yeah, uh, we just try to keep you know keep abreast of it and then the last is our, our ambulance billing and um, I always keep that increase because the more that that comes in the more they the yeah, the the bill, bill yeah. it so it, it's a good it. sign when that increases because exactly. our revenue is increasing so yeah um, and short of that, um, the only thing that it doesn't, this doesn't reflect currently is uh, we're about to begin negotiations, and so there's no, uh, there's nothing that's earmarked for that yet because we haven't uh, mm -hmm. started that process. So, so would the new contract say went through? Would would it be effective for fiscal year fifteen? Um, yes. Yes, it would. Okay. Yeah. So that so it's a little bit of a wild card. Right. Yeah, they just can't. Yeah. Okay. If we okay. kept on agreement, so yeah. Okay. Okay. So Bill, can I? I'm sorry. Yeah. Can I ask you if? Um, and, and I know we don't know what's going to happen. Um, hopefully, the police and fire uh, building will go through. But um, on some of these, with the equipment uh, repair, um, in, in the new facility, would that be new equipment, or are we, are we transferring so that? We have to kind of band-aid this equipment, or is it? No, no. Um, you know, it's just the cost of doing business with today with the, with the you know the the trucks and stuff. The you know equipment. I mean, this year alone, I put ten thousand dollars. You know, I have a twenty thousand dollar budget repair budget, and I put ten into my ambulance this year. You know. Yeah. So that, that no matter what. Yeah, it's just that's, that's a routine. Building. It's nothing. It's not anything major that unforeseen. You know, if anything's unforeseen, I have to go back for a transfer. But this yeah. kind of just keeps everything. Um, you know, routine maintenance, you know, and then small, you know, we did the brakes in the ambulance. I had a, yeah. you know, a, a wiring harness let go and, you know, it was $4,000. Yeah. You know, it's wow. just, it's, it's nothing cheap. No, no. Um, no, because I know you had an issue with the um, unexpected with the lab. Ladder truck work, last with, year. You know, last that was, was 30000 bucks. Just, you, know, you just uh, never know. Wrote, you no, you don't. Yeah. Um, you know, we. And, and the grounds and maintenance, since uh, if that does go through, that entire area would get dug up. Is that? Yeah, that just kind of the little fluff and buff we do around the station. That you know, any you know, my door repairs. Yeah. The overhead door repairs. I've had some issues with those. And, yeah. Uh, you know, that it, it, you know those things will be rolled into the new building you know, under a you know yeah. with Bob's too. You know, he has we have separate issues now, so it'd be rolled into uh, you know a combined. A new budget. Yeah. budget you know a lot of that stuff yeah I think good yeah. the only other thing I, I I will like to you know speak to you about is sure. you know is is staffing yeah um, we, we we really have to start looking at some increased staffing on a full-time okay. basis whether we you know it's it, we start working at a, a phase-in project I know mm -hmm. Pete you've talked about you know ALS the medics and you know it's really the time to start looking at it and you know because it's very difficult to um, field any on-call personnel yeah especially in, in this town they just you know I've been talking to you know two or three hopefully uh, you know I can pick up a couple I put an ad out you know for a month three months ago and I got three people that showed some interest Mm -hmm. One since moved out of town, so um, it's very difficult sure. uh, to to get new people and you know maintain what we have. You know, so yeah. I don't know whether we have a little subcommittee or, or at some time and look at, at at where we should the direction we should go. Sure. Um, and yeah. and uh, you know looking at you know versus doing it all at once. Right. If we phase it in a few here, a few there, and then work up to the point where we can go ALS, or, yeah. um, but it's really, it's really something we really need to look at. Mm -hmm. There is um, grant money that is available. Uh, the uh, feds have uh, it's called safer grants. That, that what they'll they'll fund positions for two years, and then you take them over. Take them over, yeah. Um, whether you do or how many. 
You yeah. know, it's really on what you what you can write the grant and sell to them. You know. Yeah. What's what's your ideal setting that you think you need? Um, well, I, to, to to get to the ALS, ALS level, we did, we'd have to get eight. I'm sorry. Eight. Eight, eight more. Eight yeah. more. Eight more. Yeah. So double then, right? Because you've got yeah. yeah. You have to double your staff. Right. Okay. Yeah. You know, and then. Yeah. And that would be uh, eight paramedics that you would hire. Right. So you'd have full-time paramedic service. You know, and I think you've said in the past that you can't have a non-paramedic on a on a on an ambulance if they're unless you get a waiver or something from the yeah, state. and it's unlikely that we'd get that you, oh, you know okay. a PV waiver yeah. So, so if the town wants to go to paramedic service, then we'd have to add eight yes. paramedics. Yeah. Well, we've got one now. Yeah. yeah. Might be something for you. Yeah, yeah I'm sure you, I'm sure you've been talking to Christine about, but maybe. Yeah. Put together some type of a plan, maybe mm -hmm. what you might so want to try to do discuss, and start, yeah. to start to move in that direction. I would so, think, so with know. the eight, that would be all full time without volunteer, correct? Yes. You, you'd still have volunteers. Oh, no. We, we, we would still maintain the call, call people that we have. It would be eight additional full time, so you would run the, the ALS. That would give us four to a shift. Yeah, instead so, of two. Instead yeah. of that, two. that would be about, what, five, six hundred thousand in addition yeah. of the budget? Yeah. Yeah. What's what's the yeah. length of a the shift? They do twenty four hour shifts now, so they do a twenty four hour shift. They're off the day. Do a twenty four hour shift, and they're off for four. But yeah. again, there's something to no discuss, definitely you know yeah. My my take is that the town would really be willing to pay the extra money to have a paramedic service. I mean, for me, it it, it was really brought home when I met uh, a young man who had had a his heart had stopped when he was 18 and he was brought back by the paramedics mm -hmm. and so that you just for that amount you'd need an override though okay you need an operating override to yeah well i mean the town amount. it's yeah. it's a big decision for the town i think yeah, to make it is yeah it's probably something you're going to have to do eventually but yeah. later is better as far as the budget goes yeah well, and Chief, I think I heard you say the other day when you were here about the new building that, that ultimately the, a full-time fire department was something like 20-something, wasn't it? Well, yeah, down the road, I mean... Eventually. You, 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 you look at Walpole, Westwood, they're all beyond that now. I mean, if, if in, in the building that we've worked on in, in, in designing is, you know, I think ideally where we would be would be seven to a shift. So you would have a shift officer You'd have two on the ambulance, and then you'd have four available for an engine. You know, so you could staff the engine going out the door. You know, yeah. you don't have to wait for people to show up, and so that so in that seven to a shift, and you have four shifts, so that's twenty-eight. But but you could work up there, and that's really why we designed the the, the spaces that we have because it'll yeah. it'll come. You know, it's I, I tell people it's we're not building it to to make them come. It's we got to build it because they're coming. Yes. You know, yeah. and really that's how we have to look at it. Yeah. Because um, you can't add this these features into the building, you know, 10 years down the no, road. Exactly. You can't build it into the middle of the building. You know? No. So, I mean, that's really what we're looking at. Yeah. Um, and you have to be prepared. What do we now, um, if ideally it's seven to a shift and then the four shifts, what are we operating on right now? Two. Two. Could I ask you a couple of questions about the building, about the sure. questions that people asked me after you were here the last time? Yeah, actually, do you, if, I don't know, Bob was, do you want to do his budgets and we, I could wait and we can both discuss, or do you want to? Well, however you want to do it. I mean, I was going to wait till Bob, because we thought we well, might have some questions, so if you want to okay. right. whatever, okay. run that stuff by us, right. okay. that's fine. So on, the, on the back end of a, of a call here, so hopefully the voice works for you okay. Um, did you... Um, you get the, the copies of the budget and whatnot. Yep. Yeah, we've got them. I've got them laid out. The MEMA budget, the civil defense. Yeah. Okay. That's uh, a 2.5% increase. Um, typically what we do there is my oldest cruiser, if we're turning one in, which I hope to this year, mm -hmm. it, uh, it goes to them. Uh, this past year, I believe it went to John Nath, the building inspector, because yeah. that seemed to work out well. 
we've moved a little bit of the money, moved some of the money around to reduce the electricity because we're hoping to be out of that building uh, partway through the year because there is a room at the highway garage that's set aside for all of the radios and whatnot that yeah. uh, they have up there in order to get on the highway garage. Yeah. And the whole idea behind that is so that, you know, our current building or a future building, if something happens there, yeah. it's nice to have another place to go. Exactly. Yeah. So right now where we go, would go, would be up to the state hospital building, no water, no heat, no sewage, uh, you know, it, that's it. Yeah. It's uh, it, it it it's a shell. Yeah. So this way, the radios go down to uh, a room in the highway garage where there's there's some heat, and if you really needed to operate out of there, you could operate out sure. of there. So that's that's the idea behind that. Perfect. Um, school traffic. Can I? Yep. I, I'm sure. sorry. Can I, I just because I just actually uh, went to the um, uh, the highway garage meeting this morning. That actually was uh, one of the topics. Um, are you anticipating uh, an antenna tower to be down at the at the uh, highway garage also? Yes. Do we know how tall? Not an additional one. Not, no, just an antenna, one antenna tower. That would be down at the um, the new uh, DBW facility. And then there would be one at the new police fire as well. As there is one now, right. Um, what's the height? I do not know. We, I have not heard what the height of the antenna down the DPW was. And then they're um, in a hole down there, so they need to they need to gain some height before they even get even like with Route 27. So right. And uh, would there be? Uh, it, it, it seemed like there was a, a little turf uh, issue on that. Um, is it just the radios? Is there other equipment that um, the civil well, defense wants to get because I just think civil defense is an important thing that we need. Yeah, well, what they've got um, on the plan, I believe it's a sixteen by sixteen foot room, and then, you know, if at some point the public safety building comes to fruition, then there's going to be room there for for them to train, to have their monthly meetings. So the meetings that they have been doing up at the state hospital will be easily accommodated in the new building. So be able to do that. So there. then you would have enough in that one room. You would have enough space to put what you need, civil defense wise, in the DBW. Yeah. What were they talking about? I think like worrying about where his trucks are going to go and the trailers and all. Is that what they were wondering about? Or no, I think it's more that uh, the room of what radios and how much space is there mm -hmm. versus the space that currently uh, the equipment's in now. Can can all that equipment fit in? that one room with the DPW. Yeah, I, I discussed it with Sergeant Burt, and I actually showed him a, um, the chief got me a, uh, a copy of that particular section of the schematics so I could know how, you know, what size it was, and it was appropriately sized. And, you know, there'll be room in there for a desk or something and a bench to maybe work on some of the radios and a, and a computer on a, on a tabletop or something. So, so you're okay work. with the, the amount of room? And, okay. Um, so from there, the, the school traffic yeah. is, um, you know, s small increase in the uniforms, $52. Uh, <laughs> and then we'll see what happens with the, uh, you know, any other raises that occur for town mm -hmm. employees. Okay. Uh, traffic markings. Yeah. Um, th things are working pretty well. Um, the budget I have now is we're able to keep what we've got. Uh, one of the things that the traffic like maintenance person is doing now is he's looking inside the different traffic boxes because we've had trouble down at Route 109 by Shaw's about once a month it just it starts flashing green four ways or red four ways or a combination and so when he checked the box he found that it was home to uh, snakes mice whatever because they chewed away at the uh, you know the conduits and the grommets and the weather stripping and it's a nice place to live. Um, so we're going to relocate, essentially. So he's looked at that box, so he's going to clean that box out, fix that up. That's about a $1,300 cost. And then he's going to look at the other boxes to see if there's anything that needs to be done there, just to try to keep the system working. And then um, we're going to um, continue with replacing signs as we do um, as the weather gets warmer. A couple of folks from the highway go out, look at the signs, tell them what they need to order. I order them, they put them up. So, mm -hmm. um, just so you'll know, like stop signs, regulatory signs, those come out of my budget. 
if we need a new sign that says Pleasant Street, that comes out of Ken Feeney's budget, and all of them are put up by uh, Ken Feeney's guys. Okay. So that's how that whole little process works. And then I've also, um, I've got about $5,800 left in the capital budget money from when I retimed <coughs> the lights out here mm -hmm. uh, this past August, because I know that once um, Brothers Market, Roach Brothers moves in, we're going to have to do something more with South Street because obviously that's going to change again. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, we're prepped to do that. Okay. Um, animal control, you know, I got a 2.5% increase there. It's mm -hmm. directed towards vehicles and whatnot. Sure. Um, and then from there, we can go to um, <coughs> police administration. Mm -hmm. um, basically put uh, some more money into building repairs and whatnot, even though it would be nice to not, um, you know, be there too much longer. Still have to operate day to day. Yep. Um, the, um, and actually we had a, you know, we were moaning and groaning the other day at, uh, when we did the presentation about the uneven pavement and <laughs> sloping to the side and all that. And lo and behold, one of the guys um, fractured, his, uh, fractured his ankle. Wow. Uh, on the Super Bowl Sunday and twisted it. Thought it was just a bad sprain, but no. That's, you know, a little piece of loose pavement. It would look fine, and then you put your weight on it, over it goes. So he's been out for a couple of weeks now. We should see him back in three or four weeks, we hope. Um, also in here, I'm at, I've asked the Warrant Committee for an additional $1,000 that goes in the telephone utilities area that's the same place where we have the swift reach communications that mm -hmm. we can do the reverse 911 calls. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have ever signed up for something called ping alerts. Uh, MEMA, the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, you can sign up for, with them. And so like this afternoon when the snow was coming, yeah. page, you know, the phone goes off and I take a look and, hey, it's going to snow. Like, okay, no kidding. Yeah. Good, got it. Um, so MEMA has selected ping. So what they do, it's eight cents per capita. So I rounded up 12,500 people. It comes out to $1,000. The swift reach is more when we've got something really significant and serious going on that I need to reach out to people. The ping could be something as simple as the train went through and the gates didn't come back up again. And it's localized and it's based upon where you are at that point so if you're in Westwood and you're heading towards Medfield and the gates aren't going back up again and I put this alert out through that system um, which we would have control over then as you're driving down one and I oh so that's why it's back yeah, to yeah. Nebo Street yeah. okay and now I can now you can make a decision to do something different so there's any number of lower level things that I could do on that Mm -hmm. that really a swift reach phone call to your house about the crossing gates being down really isn't going to do you a whole lot of good. But if you've got the cell phone and you've signed up for the ping alerts, which does not cost anything to the residents, it's just a $1,000 fee that would come out of my budget, uh, you can find out about these different things. Oh, Something as simple as, you know, there's a water main mm -hmm. break on Nebo Street, right. and Nebo Street's going to be detoured. You put that out. So someone that's signed up for it, in Amherst, Massachusetts, or somewhere in Maryland, and they're driving in the area, they find out about it. So it's it's based on where you where you are, where phone is. Where, where where the phone is. Yeah. And the other thing about it, uh, I did a um, a webinar with them last week. Um, they don't have a clue who you are. They don't know what your telephone number is. They don't have any identifying information. All they know is this phone is in Westwood approaching Medfield, and whoever has this phone ought to know that the railroad gates are down. Yeah. And that's it. So. And who notifies them the railroad gates are down, the Medfield police or the railroad? or? Uh, we do that. You do that. Yeah, okay. so we put the alert out. So I can do this for, for Ken Feeney for a water main break. I can do it for... Um, you know, the Board of Health for, you know, whatever. So it just gives us another way to communicate with people on a quicker basis, understanding that folks carry cell phones these days. 
and they're not necessarily at home or checking their messages and whatnot. So why not provide something quicker and simpler? So it's an option. Yeah, Put it in there. Yeah. It seems like something that, um, you know, so, might work. So for yeah. the individual, it basically is a subscription service. That right. So would you would need to sign up sign for up. your cell phone yep. carrier. Right. So and if you had it, you get the message. If you didn't, you wouldn't. Correct. Yeah. And if you're, uh, and it's a nationwide thing. So if you're traveling, you know, wherever, and this a ping alert goes out, well, fine, you you find out about it. I mean, I could send it out that, um, you know, we had uh, four cars broken into uh, in a, you know in a neighborhood last night. It's like, uh, oh, all right. Well, maybe I need to really lock the car door tonight, or put the car in the garage, and put the put the front light on so that the motion sensor is working and whatnot. You know, it just, it's just another way to get information across to people in a more timely fashion. Good. I think it sounds like a great service. It, it sounds similar. My wife takes the train every day, and she has on hers, if the train is going to be delayed, it, it, it will ping so she knows, oh, it's a 10-minute delay. Uh, it's just a great service. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yep, we'll see how that works. Um, Chief? Yes. Uh, the uh, the new school superintendent's been calling me recently at 5:30 in the morning. Right. Is he using your reverse 911 system, or does he have his own? He's using his own system. Um, I believe it's called Blackboard. And if I I did a little bit of research on it, enough to find out that it was going to cost me more than I thought I could put in the budget. Basically, it's a dollar per person. So he's got about you know some 3,000 people in the school system. Oh yeah. Yes. So for me to pick that up and do the rest of the town. Now I need another, like another nine thousand dollars in order to do that. Yeah, because okay. so, your your system costs you around six hundred to do the whole town, doesn't it? Uh, Five hundred dollars per month we pay, so per month. six thousand dollars per year. Oh, okay. Uh, for the Swift Reach. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's I had just some preliminary discussions to see how well that would work, and my initial was okay. That's that's a lot of money. We got to do a little bit of thought process over that. Do we want to? combine the systems so that we got to do a little bit more thinking on do we get charged per call on the swift reach as well yes we do okay yep. that's it's the per 600 campaign or yep. something yep so if we called um all the businesses and all the residences in the town of medfield it's somewhere around 350 to 450 dollars okay yeah so the 500 a month is a base rate 500 dollars just to be able to have it just to yep. have it okay yep it's just so it's um, you know six thousand dollars a year just to have it. But it might be worth combining both of those. To, you know, I mean, they basically sounds like the same system. And if we could just get by with one of them instead of having <coughs> a school as subscription as and a town subscription. The ping only works for cell yes. phones, though, right? Does it? Does well, I'm not talking about the ping. I'm talking about the yeah, Swift talking reach about, and, and the, oh, and the maybe, blackboard and, and the blackboard thing. Maybe merge uh, Swift reach and blackboard. Yeah. 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 As long as you can separate it so that. People who don't have school kids know, don't get called at 5.30 in the morning. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they'd like to hear from Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's very yeah, you, you create different <laughs> subscriber lists. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. You'd have subscriber lists for, uh, as we do, we have a subscriber list just for commercial, for residential. Yeah. We can then, um, uh, Blackboard can probably do this. I'm not sure. I had to find out. But with the swift reach, I can define an area by drawing with the mouse okay. around a neighborhood. Oh, that's and great. so that, you know, if there's, a, if there's been an issue with the water mm -hmm. and there's been a break and people need to, um, you know, let the taps run for however right. long before they do the load of wash so the wash doesn't come out brown, you know, I can segment that off. Of course, if it's right. going to, some, most of the times when that happens, it involves the entire town. So, uh, yeah. Chief, they say more and more people are going landless. Yes, they absolutely. They have cell phones. Yep. Does that system work with cell phones yes, as well does. as with land-based phones? Yep. yep, it does. And do they? does a person with a cell phone have to call in and give you their cell phone number, or can the company pick it up? No, we need the cell phone number needs to be provided to us. Um, basically, what we operate off of is the Verizon phone list. So the residential and the commercial listing for the town of Medfield, as you'd find in a phone book. Right. That's what it's based on. Okay. So if someone like just has a cell example, phone, just has a cell phone, right. they would have to call in and or get, get online or something and fill out a form to get become part of the system. What happens now is that people can call and they leave a message with me and I just add them onto the system. Now, the rest of this is that probably within a month. We're going to change the Swift Reach system. They're going to a next generation. 
So we're going to move all the people over to the next generation, and then they're going to do what's called open a portal. So now there's going to be a website, you know, perhaps off of the town of Medfield. That would be great. Like and you can go there there. and you can fill in what numbers you want to call, have called. If it's the landline first, then the cell phone. If it's the cell phone first, then the landline. Text. So that's, that'll be moving over probably within the next month or so to see how that works. Well, that would be good. good. That's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, it might be a good thing to have a sort of a, a welcome to Medfield package for people so that they can sign up for the uh, email alerts from the from the town hall Schools, about what yeah. public meetings are going on. I, I find that really helpful. Yeah. Maybe the Newman Town Club would be a good and then yeah. And then contact. your information about uh, getting on your list. Yeah, yeah that would be. Good. So um, bottom line is that police administration um, – it's uh, that one section of it is actually a 3.5 percent increase because of the um, because of the ping alerts and whatnot. So, uh, and then you go down to the operations part um, where we've got the salaries and whatnot. We already have a salary that's good until I believe we're good until the uh, the 30th of June 2016. So, okay. it's just yeah, you know tomorrow. the contracts already figured out. The only um, significant change in this one is I've uh, requested from the Warren Committee $8,000 and that is to have uh, a group come in and look at the policy and procedure manual for the police department and do it over. Yeah. Uh, Christine Schwierweiler and I went to a conference probably about a year and a half, maybe two years, probably two years this spring, yeah. and heard a fellow uh, speak by the name of Gordon Graham. Um, he was a California Highway Patrol uh, officer for years, and then little by little as he was doing that, he got into risk management. So um, his thing is predictable is preventable. So if you know certain things are going to happen eventually, yeah. deal with them and try to prevent the issue from coming up. Maya um, has uh, entered into a relationship with these folks, and I've been talking to him for the past year and a half. Okay, when are you going to come to Massachusetts? When are you going to come to Massachusetts? So now I kept prodding him and gave him some of the names of some people at Maya, and there's been uh, some conversations. So I think it's actually going to come to Massachusetts in April anyway. Um, so this allows me to clean up an area that um, the, the policy and procedures come out of the mind of Bob. Uh, yes, I cut, I paste, I look, you know, at the IACP, International Association of Chiefs of Police, the Mass Chiefs of Police, get, you know, policy and procedures from there, and, you know, that's what we use. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the initial is $8,000, and there's a subscription service, a yearly fee, and as a change in Massachusetts law occurs, they know it, they rewrite the policy, specifically for Massachusetts, specifically for Medfield, mm -hmm. and then we get the new policy. So keeps us update. It's, I, I find that more and more of this job is, it's, it's risk management, it's reduction of liability. Sure. Um, so this just helps with the job. So, uh, so that's essentially the, that part of the budget. Just some updates, or some little heads up you ought to have. Um, I'm going to try for, uh, I'm going to request a cruiser from the capital budget this year. Um, I saw also, I've got that policy and procedure thing. I've also got that in the um, uh, in the capital, just in case the Warren Committee decides that it's a large expenditure, but it's not something you can hold in your hand. So I don't know if you consider it capital or not. Yeah. So that's why I put it in the budget as opposed to put it in capital because you can't drive it. Right. I can't trade it in. It's yeah. nothing that you can look at and say, there it is right there. So, and then the other thing is uh, Chief Kingsbury and I are working on a upgrade to the radio system because pretty much um, with his personnel and with my personnel, when you get down towards the south end of town, you get down to like Pilgrim, Stagecoach, Indian Hill, Wichita, all that place. Oh. <clears throat> it's very much in the shadows of Newton Hill, and uh, the portable radios very often do not work. Uh, the cruiser and the apparatus radios most of the time can get back, but you know you don't always have the luxury of being next to the cruiser or next to the engine when you need to call back to the station for some help. So. Where, uh, so that's another thing I'm going to put in the capital, see, how see if that works, another upgrade that would benefit us both. Okay. 
and um, I don't have any official notification yet, but I've got two offices who probably will be retiring in the next fiscal year. Okay, okay. So I'm not going to say the names because they haven't completely made their decisions yet. They haven't made their yeah. arrangements for the next phase of their life yet. So, but, um, you know, that's going to be a, a, a significant change in the department and hiring a couple of new people and perhaps promoting someone to a uh, sergeant and whatnot. Um, so, you know, that'll be coming. I gave the Warren Committee the heads up on that, too. And then just, you know, a general issue we've been talking about how our departments are going to be affected by whatever happens at the state hospital. If the town does take the property and now we're responsible for the security and, yeah. you know, police and fire protection and whatnot. And, you know, we had a meeting with Mike and Ken and Stan and Christine what, uh, about a week ago. And, uh, you know, for I don't think uh, you were mentioning you hadn't been up there in about 10 years, probably. And we go up there very little, but this is going to be the first time if, you know, the property is purchased and the state turns it over to us sometime the end of the calendar year, early, whenever that happens, that there hasn't been somebody on the property 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit of an unknown. Uh, as to what we're really going to need up there. Do I expect crowds of people to be up there the next day causing issues? No, I don't. Um, do I suspect that, as we had happened this fall, a group of students from UMass Amherst came out at 1 o'clock in the morning during a full moon to, to see the paranormal um, vistas that occur throughout the buildings and around the buildings? Yes, we're going to have some of that. Um, you know, do I suspect there's going to be large amounts of issues up there? No, not necessarily. Do I think some things are going to happen? Sure. Um, you know, one of the things we're discussing is that probably one of the best things, um, depending on how it works, is the people who are up there now walking around and walking their dogs and whatnot, they're, they're a great set of eyes and ears. So we just have to do that, you know, the tease version of see something, say something. Yeah. If you notice something out of whack, a piece of plywood that's plied away from a, pried yeah. away from a, one of the buildings, let us know uh, so that, you know, whoever can is going to, if it's going to be Ken Feeney's people who are going to go up and address the, you know, replacement of some plywood or whatnot. So it's a little bit of an unknown. I know people have been asking, what do we think it's going to cost? Uh, yeah. Hard, hard to put a finger on that. I certainly can't look you in the eyes and say, oh, I need two more people. That, that, that's crazy. Am I going to have to have the officers go up there probably a couple times a shift, start the shift, end of the shift, to see what's going on, make sure it's all okay? Sure. But, you know, they're out there anyway. Yeah. Wait, um, uh, oh, go, go, go ahead. ahead. No. Just uh, one thing I want to mention. I, when the chief earlier uh, in the, his presentation mentioned that the uh, – he, he was trading a cruiser and that normally they turned it over to another department. Yeah. If the town becomes a green community, you would no longer be able to do that. You would have to trade in that vehicle and purchase energy efficient vehicles, whatever department would normally be turned over to. So um, there would be a cost there. For example, he mentioned that uh, last year they turned a cruiser over to the building inspector to use when he goes out and makes his inspections. You would no longer be able to do that. You would have to buy a new vehicle if you wanted to have a vehicle for the building inspector. But, but the police itself would not be under that. The cruisers and stuff are not under those requirements. Not as long as it stayed as an emergency vehicle within the police department. I'm not it sure. If to something else, then it would. To, a, to another non-emergency function, you would uh, be required to uh, purchase an energy-efficient vehicle. Yeah, you get rid of the hand-me-down. Um, yeah. My, my former okay. vehicle was with the school department, and the pickup that we just turned over to Park and Rec, you wouldn't be able to do that, I believe is what you're saying. Right, yeah, yeah. And they're, they're perfectly good for their use. Yeah. And like the uh, the cruiser that was turned over to the building inspector, I maybe I would have got two or three hundred dollars for it. Yeah. So I put seven or eight hundred dollars into it. It got repainted to gray for some short money, and there we go. It's done. And as opposed to spending whatever, 
And you, you may or may not choose to do that. You may not choose to even have the vehicle. And it's just right. a neat way to be able to do it. But, you know, as Mike was, you know, giving us a heads up last week, we might not, might not be able to do that anymore. It's just a... Um, with the, um, the retirements of the officers, if it goes through, um, if, if they felt comfortable, if you felt that might make some sense too, we'd love to... Um, have them come and thank them. We'd like to. We'd like to be able oh, to sure. thank them in a meeting. I think that'd be great. Yep. And I just appreciate the years of service to the to the. So, if they feel that's something that they'd like to do and stuff like that, they feel comfortable <clears throat> doing. We'd love to have them here. Sure. Thank you. Is there a mandatory retirement age for uh, police officers? Uh, police officers or firefighters? He's under five, and I'm just a hair over five. It's 65 years of age. So he's already hit the 6-0. I'm creeping up on it real fast during the summer. <laughs> and at that point, it's find the sign that's illuminated with exit, make use of it, and don't let it hit you in the tail section as you pass through it. <laughs> uh, but that's it. At 65, we're done. Yeah. <clears throat> that's what now, there, are some, there have been some cases where special act of the legislature, but I don't think they get real thrilled about doing that. You know, yeah. they, they give you a couple of years if you're doing a search or something. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little bit of. The state police used to be 55, wasn't it? Yes, I believe it was 50 if you were in uniform, oh. 55 if you'd been promoted to a position that no longer required you to wear a uniform. But then I believe that when they combined with the registry, the capital, the Metropolitan District Commission, um, I, I don't know that there's a very well-defined retirement age any longer for that oh. particular group of folks. Yeah. Could be wrong, could still be under negotiations and whatnot, but... Um. Um, Chief, uh, what happens now when you get officers that were under the old Quinnbill coverage retire and new police come in? Um, how does that work? The um, people who are already employed, um, and that inc it includes everyone who's working there now, yeah. get a percentage. New people, someone that would be hired next week or whatever, um, get a flat fee. So the flat, so it's a percentage. You really don't have to negotiate it. It just goes up as the pay raise goes up. Um, flat fee that would need to be negotiated each time. Okay. And that doesn't, it's not steps or anything, it stays the same flat fee and unless there's... Based on your education. Contract. Okay. Yep. okay. Based on the level of education you have. And the other thing we did as part of that is in order to um, be hired here, you have to have a minimum of an associate's degree. A lot of places don't have that, so we, you know, put that in to try to and does that that doesn't to, cost anything. That's just, you, you come with that. Yeah. Does that have to be in public safety or a particular field? Or? No, it does not. Um, Christine uh, Trewell and I had a discussion with the union on that, and I was really the one that there are so many, this job is so different from 30 years ago. Degrees that you would have had didn't even exist then, so we left it open. So it's the discretion of the chief and the board as to whether or not, you know, this is an appropriate, yeah. but, you know, computer programming, um, you know, anything to do with forensics, sociology skills, there's any number of accounting, um, mm -hmm. you know, the, any number of things that could greatly help us. Yes. Um, the other thing that the state program limits is it has to be a, an accredited college, I believe, within New England. So if you had a CJ degree from, you know, New York, as one of our offices does, it wouldn't have counted. So that counts. Um, so it was very, it was limited in its, uh, you know, in its scope. So we left a little more discus discretion and, you know, allow for management folks to make a decision whether that's an, a, an yeah. appropriate degree or not. Makes sense. Political science could be a... We could go for that. <laughs> I could. <go>. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's any number of, um, you know, very valid degrees. And just the fact that a person has a degree, yeah. you know, as long as it's not in something that's 
totally out there. I mean, even if a person had a, de a degree in education, you think that person's going to be a teacher. Well, uh, so much of what we do now, communication, teaching, uh, I've got at least three offices <laughs> that spend parts of their time uh, in the school system. So there you go. John Geary does, Michelle Manganello does, Eric Pellegrini is now working um, with, the, uh, with the wellness people over the high school doing the uh, RAD class, the rape aggression defense and whatnot. So, uh, you know, we got people over there doing things now, education-wise. Well, I had, when I was, was still teaching, uh, John Geary would come in every year. Um, right. Just did an excellent job of just going over all the uh, the rules, regulations, and of course the kids had a million questions. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, and, and great he questions. loves doing it. But he did just a great job yeah. working with the kids on that. Yeah, no, yeah. it's a great banter back and forth that goes on. It's you know, it, it it's really the base of what this country's about. But I think it's great for the kids to see the offices mm -hmm. uh, on a one to one basis like that too. It it develops a little, I don't know, bonding is the right word, but at least respect, and it gets the the officer with the kids and the kids with the officer that. Just works very well. Yeah, you, each party sees the other in a different light. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and it, it and it's not contrived to be that way. You put the people there, the right people there, and it just happens. Yeah. And then you know maybe when that young person has got a decision to make or thinking about doing something, you're like, oh, what if so and so shows up? Yeah. No. No. I'm not going to do that. Or maybe it's another person that they might actually reach out to and say, hey, I, I've got this going on. What, what do you think? Yeah. And that's, you know, and, and of course, eventually we're going to end up with a school resource office. You know, you know, Superintendent Jeff Marsden and I are on board with that. But we got so many other things going on this particular year that yeah. you know, there's, there's a lot going on out there financially that mm. we just didn't want to put a lot more pressure on. Including the snow budget. <laughs> yeah, just the winter that never ends. Yes. Yeah. Good. So any well, good. questions that you want to yep. fill in Ida? I, I, I'd like to go back to that Medfield State Hospital issue because uh, I think the town is going to be hoping to get some information from the two of you as to what you expect the costs will be going forward so the town can make a decision about what ongoing costs might be for the town if the town does opt to buy it. So I'm hoping that uh, at some point you guys will be able to quantify that in some way or other. Well, my, my thinking as I think about it is that I wouldn't have 24-7 security at Medfield State Hospital. No, I don't think I you would, need that. I would maybe build some barriers that would prevent vehicle access. I would put up some cameras, and I would make everybody drive in and out by the MEMA facility uh, where there are a lot of people a lot of times. Well, we talked about a lot of those things, and, and one of the issues with putting barriers up, if you block the vehicle access totally, then the police can't get in and patrol the area. Well, they can get in by the MEMA. You can have people drive in and out through the MEMA back driveway. But anyone else can, too. So Yeah. So, uh, I mean, Could you do, like, a gate system? I know, like, on uh, several of the streets, you have well, that gate system. That That's exactly what we talked about is... is Dealing with the vehicle access, because if we try to, even if you put a 10-foot fence up all the way around it, right. it, if I want to get to the other side of the fence, I'm getting to the other side of the fence. Exactly. So let's just admit that right now. But if we did um, limit access to vehicles, and there's very simple ways to do that, and it doesn't have to be, you know, ugly and whatnot, and then perhaps where the security building is now, right in the edge of Hospital Road, so it's very visible, we have a gate similar to what is at Eric Road that it's just activated by the cruiser lights because they've already, you know, we've already got that ability on our apparatus on our vehicles. And in the gate you go. You do your little once around, you come back out, gate goes down. Now people can walk in there, they can, right. you know, mountain bike, cross country ski, snowshoe, ride their horses. That all works and you encourage those folks and you bring them in on our side to if you see something that's going on there, just let us know where it is so we can go up and check on it, find out what needs to be done with. So that was one of our thoughts. You limit the vehicle access except for one gate um, that we can get in and out of relatively simply. And then we discussed um, perhaps having a pool of money so that 
if Ken needed, you know, three sheets of plywood yeah. and yeah. whatever, that there'd be some money there that, you know, you could draw from to right. deal with issues as you find them. Because we're not, we really don't know what it is we're going to find. We, we figure that there's going to be some folks try to get into the buildings. Um, so there's probably going to have to be some repairs made on a, you know, every few days or every few weeks. We really don't know. And then right at the moment, you're just thinking pretty much it's just um, part of a patrol pattern at the moment. Right. See yep. where it takes you. Yeah. yeah, and then there were some other issues. For example, uh, the chief's mentioned that uh, when there were fireworks or when there was sledding up there, a lot of people park on Hospital Road, that it might be safer if you acquired the hospital property to have a, some designated parking area inside the hospital grounds where people could park so they wouldn't Beyond be parked the on the road and have kids starting out between cars and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so that's a benefit there. But, yeah. uh, it, you know, I, I think what we all concluded is we'll give you some figures. Don't hold us to them. Right. You know, I mean, we can't guarantee because we don't exactly know it's a new experience for us. We'll yeah. try to give you the best figures we can, but, uh, you know, uh, We'll have to see what goes on. You know, there may be some time of year when the kids are out of school or, or there's, uh, you know, you get somebody decides it's a good place to hang around that you might have to put some patrols in. And For a couple of nights. A couple of nights or something to give them the idea that, you know, you can't do this, that sort of thing. But I agree with you. I don't think we can afford to have 24-7 coverage out there. You need it either. Well, no. and I think and really if you think about it, it, it it's not going to be a lot of money, relatively speaking, anyways, that you look at. I mean, it really isn't no. for, for some, you know, in, in the scheme, scheme of things. Yeah. Extra patrols and stuff like that and some, some material and stuff like this and make sure work. I mean, it's not going to be. One thing, if it ever stops snowing, I've got to get some somebody up there to get a, some information on insurance coverage, liability coverage, which is... Yeah. That could be a big factor for abandoned buildings. Yeah. You know, it would probably be more of an issue for Ken. Right. You know, keeping it open and, you know, making a route through there in the winter to yeah. access to the building, you know, not that like they do now, but. Yeah. Um, DPW did check with a DCAM to find out what, um, what they do now. And they have a contract with a guy that, a private contractor that plows, plows. the road. Yeah. And I believe he only plows if it's greater than four inches. And I think the figure was somewhere around 3,500 per storm. So uh, if you got a eight-inch storm, he'd go in and plow the roads and keep it open. Yeah. And then we talked about mowing. Mowing, yeah. You yeah. know, whether you um, could find somebody to be willing to go in and mow or whether uh, for, for, to we, get the hay or whether they're going to. And we also talked about if Maya was to make some judgment as to liability, whether you have to fix any of the, the potholes to keep from people from falling in that walk. I mean, yeah. you, just, you open up to a liability issue mm -hmm. once. On the roads there. Yeah. On the roads. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. It's all kind of speculating what. It might be easy to tear up the roads, go back to dirt roads, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They're halfway there. <laughs> yeah, yeah still. Are. there actually aren't very many potholes up there. Roads are you know, there there's also a you know a maintenance issue where the there's a fire pump up there. Um, That's right. That, yeah, yeah. You know, so there's they one time offered the town an old antique fire engine that they had. It was like a hand. Fire yeah, we engine. have that. Oh, you have it. Yeah, it's a, just a little hose cart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, oh good. Yeah, it was up. In, uh, we picked it up in uh, Tewksbury. I think I went up and got it. It was up there. They moved it up there when they closed, and they was like sitting around there. And they asked us, uh, "Damn, maybe it was Danvers, I don't know." But up that way, and uh, we brought it back. But yeah, good. But so they have two old trucks, huh? Or three? Yeah, we had three. Two, yeah. <laughs> um, Bill, I was going to ask you, um, yep. how many miles and years do we get out of the ambulance? It seems to me it's been around for quite a number of years at this point, the one we have now. Um, it's probably approaching, you know, 80,000 miles on it now. Um, it's pushing eight years. So I usually, it, it actually, it's um, seven years. So, um, you know, it's 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 getting close to there. So we're, and the funds are almost there to, to, to replace it. So, but my, my plan is, and again, it gets, gets back to the building, is, um, I hope to keep this 
ambulance as a spare. Um, and then with, you know, so if the new one is out for repairs, you know, we, we have a fallback because right now we don't. And when we were, you know, when I had the problem a couple of weeks ago with the, with the wiring harness that uh, chafed and shorted out, um, it was down for a week. So we were without an ambulance for a week, you know, relying on mutual aid and it's, uh, it becomes very difficult. So uh, our, our hope is to, and that's the only additional piece of apparatus that will be going in the station, but... Um, to keep this as a reserve ambulance, you know. You wouldn't then, get much for trading on it. No. Anyways, yeah. You know. Exactly. Um, so you know that's that's our plan is to to keep it as a spare ambulance and you know down the road you know if whatever happens with the hospital um, you know I'm sure there's going to be an increase in medicals and you might end up running two ambulances most most everybody around us now are are running two oh, so. Those ambulances cost around four hundred thousand or something. What's that? I'm I'm wondering how much the ambulances cost. It's about one seventy. Okay. Yeah. And we we actually fund that through the the oh, revenue. Oh, we okay. have a revolving account. Yeah. We capture a portion of the the revenue for a replacement ambulance. So yeah, that's worked really well. Yeah. Wish we could do that with your fire trucks. <laughs> <laughs> So just a, 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 a suggestion on budgeting for the, uh, the next time you guys do budgets. It's really helpful for me to see what the expenditure of the budget was last year because that's, that's the only way that I'm used to reading budgets is to see side by side what it was last year versus this year. Some of them ha have it and some of them don't. But uh, It should be in there. The sum, we've got the summary page, which is good. It's just the detailed page, I don't think. Some of the detailed pages don't have last year on yeah, okay. yeah. oh, I, I thought joy usually puts them all together but that's that's, that's who yeah, usually she puts does together. have them better i think they're in the package yeah probably when you put them together you just didn't incorporate them in there though oh i thought she that's just gave them to you because she gives you all that yeah. stuff anyway but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's no problem that's kind of so, hard too only because a lot of times we're robbing peter to pay paul and in, in, in the in the line items so you know it's like my maintenance now is down to almost gone and i'll probably you know running out of deficit but sure. oh. your fuel budget won't be that healthy well you don't pay fuel you do no i you, oh, you, eating, oh, no eating, i do yeah. well he's on gas i'm on oil on oil yeah yeah no yeah, it's the electricity i think yeah and well, the trash that's electricity okay yeah. right but then he he reminds me that he was there first, so you know, I'm going to deal with the trash. In lieu of rent, he pays my electric <laughs> right. bill. Yeah, it's a, little, <laughs> it's a little compensation for you know allowing us to be next to him. You know. Thank you. So, so if, if I could ask the question that was asked of me, and I, I didn't know the answer. I, I, I hadn't probably paid enough attention when you guys were talking about the new building. I was asked why there is such a large conference room, 50-seat conference room, and I was asked why there was a gym in there. Could you maybe just address those two issues? Sure. Um, the uh, you know I'll, I'll give my two cents. No, that's, um, we're on the same page, so you know. yeah. The uh, the training room is also it's also going to act as an emergency operations center, so that um, right now if this had been three feet of snow or whatever, and we all needed some place to be in the same room and operate together, police, fire, highway, board of health, town administration, we'll have uh, a room to do that in. Um, the other part of it is that if you have a facility such as that, you can have people will come in and will provide training and will very often give seats at no cost to the hosting agency. So it, does not, it doesn't pay back immediately, mm -hmm. but over time you recoup some of the money that you paid for a little bit larger and a little bit better facility. Um, and then the other part, too, is, you know, the community groups are going to be welcome to come in and make use of it. Um, and then as far as the um, gym goes, what we're looking for with that is more and more you see from Maya, they're offering the different classes around town. Um, the uh, school and uh, does different classes at the end of the school day that many people participate in. So there's a trend to go that way. And I think very, being very honest about it is that if it's there, you're much more likely to do it
come in a little early, stay a little late, and work out as opposed to you get home, then you got to go somewhere. Now, you and I currently do that, yeah. but there are days when you just soon stay put at 20 minutes of 7 as opposed to getting up and going down to the gym and working out. So, And we're also thinking that there seems to be a trend to incorporate some type of fitness into public safety agencies in general as a trend. So we're trying to get ahead of that. It may not be anything that either one of us see in our, you know, management <coughs> careers, but it's coming. So it's nice to be able to have the facility and do it. And actually, it, you know, it looks large on the plan. I think it's probably about the size of the meeting space here. It's not, you know. And the other part is. Well, one of the things, too, with, with, yeah. on my end is it gets personnel in the station. Right. So if, you know, they're, if they're there working out and you get an incident, they're there. Oh. You know, I mean, if they come back on their own time it's versus being at some gym in Walpole or, yeah. you know, you, you make it available to them and then there's, you have that, men, you know. One, one other thing, too, I think, as far as the training room goes, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, Chief, but my understanding, your men are required to do 40 hours a year in service training. Yeah, we have to do training anyway. Right? And if we can do a lot of that at the station rather than sending them to a remote location to do the training. That, and it um, works the same with us. I mean, it's although we're not required to that, but 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 again, the, but the yes. classes, we, you know, with the fire academy, you come out and teach there. You know, right now we can we can fit about twenty people, and and it's, you know, we're like sardines. So it's it's you need the space to do the the the, the programming. And, yeah. Um, and one of the things that we're trying to, that you know, the chief and I have tried very hard to do with this building is that, it's not for ten years. It's not for fifteen years. It's for 20, 30, 40 years, things that we don't even conceive of now. When I started, computers, having, you know, in, in, you didn't need conduits. Now, one of the biggest concerns I've got in the plan is, you know, how many conduits this big have I got running around the building to make sure of all the technology can get around? So for the increase in the amount of space, overall space, for those two rooms, it's... it's it's not a lot, but it thinks ahead as to where we're seeing some trends going uh, and some changes. And the other thing is that we've had, um, I've had discussions with the folks in my side of the building about the equipment. Yes, I have too. And, you know, we're thinking that we can probably come up with the equipment. Might not all be there in day one. Might take a little while to get it there, but we're thinking that we so if we got we the provide space, them the space. If we get the space, the, you know, we can, the, the two groups will provide the equipment, equipment. Or, or whatever to, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, you know, to buy into the two, you know, into the program, yeah. and it may not look like Planet Fitness on day one, which it doesn't need to. Yeah. Um, and really, the trend these days is to go to simpler, yeah. the free weights and whatnot. It's just go, going back a little bit. The machines were the big deal for a while, and. Yeah. Now you need something to do, some cardio work, some aerobic work. You need some free weights. You need some space to, you know, kind of like the, like what we do. Kind of like yeah. the stuff that we do. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, some of that too is just the savings. I mean, it's it's better health. It's going to absolutely come up on your on your health insurance, and you're going to have healthier officers, uh, public safety people. I mean, that that's the whole trend. Um, the the better fitness, the the, you know, it, it's going to ricochet in a number of different uh, other mm. categories that you know that are going to yeah. offset well some what's of those um, costs. what's your biggest loss for firefighters you were saying was it hard uh, hard issues oh absolutely yeah okay. you, that's you, how we lose as firefighters is right. hard issues so if we can do something that's going to prevent that then mm -hmm. that it just makes sense you're 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 preempting um and and the schools i think have done a very good job on that uh um, the, the teachers are engaged in all kinds of different wellness activities and stuff. They're healthier. They're in school longer. Uh, they're not out on sick leaves, and um, they're not going to become a drain on the, you know, on the health insurance budget. And that's going to be the same. So the more I think you can do things like that, the better it helps the town in the long run. Absolutely. But I, I can see why it, you know, it could be a lightning rod. I, you know, I, I know why people would ask. Yeah, it's just. Um, 
but I think the long term. It's a valid benefits. question, but it just yep. you know I think Absolutely. you know it's it's not a, a, a fluff item. I mean, there's there's a reason that we we yep. want it. And, mm -hmm. Um, my favorite uh, suggestion that I had for Mike recently was that I thought he should buy every uh, every town employee a Fitbit because it's one of these fancy pedometers that right. uh, goes with yes. your well mine goes in my pocket but right um, and then it, it just syncs with your computer automatically you can set up a group you could have a group of all town employees and then all town employees would see how much the other in town employees how many steps they were walking each day and then you'd get competition you'd get fitter town employees I think we're going to we're going to see more and more of that, more and more of that over time because Maya has taken the lead in that, mm -hmm. you know, in a lot of different initiatives that they're yeah, doing they around town. Sure. And you know, as Richard mentioned, the, the wellness classes as opposed to when when we were all in gym, you know, it was a certain number of these things, that thing, and whatnot. Now, now it's it, it's more a mindset. Yeah. And there's an expectation that you're going to remain active yeah. throughout your life, yeah. and if part of that can be done through the workplace where it's right there and available pre, post, you know, your time on duty, yep. it makes it simpler. Excellent. Okay. Right, I think we're all set. That's great. Thanks so much Let's, for all the... Uh, okay. Thank you for coming in again. Yep. Thanks, As guys. ever, any questions, just okay. ask. Good. We've got a number of um, action items to, uh, to go through. Um, first up, we have a vote here to authorize uh, the chairman to sign the contract with uh, Powers and Sullivan, our um, town auditors. And we have a recommendation, I guess, from Joy. Yes, uh, this is a th th uh, three year fixed price contract. These are new auditors. This is the first year they completed the audit. Uh, we haven't got the final audit in as soon as we do. We'll get you all copies. Mm -hmm. um, I think Joy and Georgia and Stan Bergeron and myself, Chris, the school department, were very uh, pleased with the, the performance and, uh, and the superintendent actually came to the meeting with the auditors this year and uh, it was the first time he's been there and it worked out very well, I thought. So Good. he's uh, digging into, uh, so they had some suggestions as to how the school cafeteria and the athletic fund should be handled that he's Good already moving on so is there a, a way too that they're working to try to get um, the town and the school uh, on uh, sort of the same page and right now like uh, the numbers and uh, April, are a little different and makes it complicated I, I believe it's April 15th um, where integrating the school accounting system with the town accounting yeah. system with a it'll require a little more work because I have to put like 40 numbers in when they put an invoice through because um, the, the state and the town use uh, the Department of Education and the Bureau of Local Services use different accounting systems uh, and you need both of them you need the Department of Education one for the school reports for everything else you need the local services accounting system it's called UMass nothing to do with your alumni, your alma mater, it's uh, Uniform Municipal Accounting System. And um, they have to, at year end, the school has to get together with the town and cross-hatch everything. So this way, um, they are gonna start as a test run and I think it's uh, April, sometime in April, um, converting the systems over so that they will be able to integrate both accounting systems in so we are doing that school would that make it more efficient would it, would it uh, save some yes revenue or yeah when you go to do your year-end report for schools you know they have to report by school by function uh, by line item so that will already be done from entering the bills so they'll be able to pull that out uh, much quicker now it takes months for them so to less overtime that to they'll it. have to have to work on things like that so it would make it more efficient and make some somewhat of a savings yes and uh, well basically I, I hate to say this but it allows you to deal with the more and more regulations that keep coming down you know right now we have to do an audit every year a federal single audit because we get over 300,000 in federal funds mm -hmm. um, this year we had an actuarial audit for the for the uh, OPEB uh, funding system. We have a workers' comp audit. We have a financial audit. You know, I mean, it just 
grows and grows the what the the hoops they jump through the the treasurer has to submit reports to the uh, um, bonding agent we use as to the financial conditions of the town we have to do dun and bradstreet reports uh you know it, it just mountains of things that we never used to have to do and, and you need to update the systems t uh but we've gone along we have integrated uh an awful lot of our financial systems between the town and the schools and we're continuing to do that so good all right so uh, we'll take a vote pete would you like to make a motion so moved second all in favor aye aye, aye. aye. I'll take care of that. We'll sign that. Uh, next, we need to um, take a vote to sign an agreement for uh, consulting services with Human Resources Services, Inc. Uh, that's located in Andover, Mass. This is the money that was appropriated in last year's capital budget, I believe, or no, personnel uh, uh, budget. Um, to uh, We're supposed to do it every five years, and it's probably been a lot longer than uh, that we've done the last one. So okay. this will get us up to date on that. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, next, we need to take a vote to sign the March 10th, uh, 2014 Special Town Meeting Warrant. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yep. Aye. Uh, make sure you sign that uh, yep. because that has to be posted uh, yep. pretty quickly. So. Okay. Um, vote to place the override question regarding the State Hospital land purchase of bonds on the March 31st, 2014 annual town election ballot. So moved. Second. All in yep. favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. Uh, there's just one override question on this year. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, pertaining to the acquisition of State Hospital property. So okay. the other bonding issue is for the water tower, and that will be paid for out of water and sewer enterprises fund, so it won't require a, a override. Uh, next up on the agenda, uh, Pete wanted to discuss the, uh, with the annual town meeting the warrant articles pertaining to the Medfield Energy Committee. The um, Energy Committee had a meeting uh, last week, and uh, they inquired whether the, the uh, Board of Selectmen might want to uh, sponsor with them the two warrant articles that related to the Green Communities Act. One has to do with the stretch code, and the other is the, uh, as of right, zoning, I think it is, for the... Uh, for uh, solar, solar photovoltaic, photovoltaic facilities in yeah. the industrial extensive district mm -hmm. and, and I told them that I would bring that question to the board I, I like the idea of becoming a green community so I think it's the right thing to do the um, the uh, uh, state also would give us a, a, a grant the first year of hundred and forty eight thousand dollars if we became a green community so that the money is very nice I think regardless of the money I think it's the right thing to be doing for the environment um, I think the, uh, the the as of right siting I think is fine in the industrial extensive zone for the for the uh, solar. I think the the big question will be with the uh, stretch code, and I guess the way that I have analyzed the stretch code is that it really is just a forward thinking. Well, it's it's a question of whether or not we want to be forward thinking, because ultimately. Uh, everybody adopts the stretch code the code that we have in massachusetts now right now the state building code right now used to be the stretch code mm -hmm. um, and uh, they have not designed a new stretch code yet but if we adopt this provision then when they come out with a new stretch code that requires greater energy efficiency savings we would have to adopt that one as well but again you're just ahead of the curve because that is eventually going to become the required state building code just as the current or, or the old stretch code is now the current building code so I, I think it makes sense to be forward thinking that way to, to be asking our residents to build houses that are more energy efficient the the, the indications when there were presentations on this uh, several years ago when it, this was being discussed was that it, it, it ends up adding several thousand dollars to the cost of a, of a new residence but that you get the money back in very short number of years. The payback was, I don't remember whether it's three or seven, but it was very short. And then after that, you're making money every year from having these things built into it. Um, so I think it's the right thing to do for for the residents uh, to get the money and, uh, and and for the environment in the long run to build houses that don't use as much, uh, as much energy. And so we're reducing the carbon footprint of, of the homes in Medfield. Um, Richard, just your well, thoughts on that? I, I, well, I, I think um, 
Pete makes um, some very good uh, arguments with that. Um, and, and I think we have a committee. I, I would want to vote to support um, that committee. Uh, there, they have two different articles that are, that are going on to town meeting. Uh, I think, if nothing else, we need to um, let the town meeting decide on that. I, I think I agree uh, with Pete's statement on the on the green community. I'm a little uh, the jury's out a little on the stretch go, but I, I think Pete again makes a, a pretty good uh, argument um, that eventually. Uh, we are in the forefront, and eventually that that becomes the code. But um, I, I would I would vote to go along with both of those. Okay, um, I, I have no issue. I think as of the right siding for the fo photovoltaic, um, I have an issue with the stretch code. Personally, adoption of that, you know, adopting something that we don't know what's going to be in the future. And I had it the last time too when we were down. So that that just is a sticking point for me. And I found in my um, personal experience in in my uh, professional life that. Um, the cost that my customers have seen that they've incurred to meet stretch code <coughs> things are not a couple thousand dollars, but they have been tens of thousands of dollars that's been in their homes that they've had to pay for. And we, we've seen that, I've seen the bills for it. And so personally, I won't, yeah, I, I can't support the, um, I can't support, it, you know, their, uh, at least that second Warren article. So I guess we're probably two to one then, I think, as far as, you know, how we support that and stuff like that. So, All right. Yeah. So that we will become the uh, the board will then become a joint sponsor of that warrant article at town meeting. Yeah. If you vote to put it on, yeah. Yeah, yeah due to one. Yeah. I would move that we uh, that we uh, become a sponsor of those two warrant articles at town meeting. And I'll second that. Okay. And I'll say no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Um, and then, Pete, we can kind of continue our discussion, too, as far as, you know, the Warren article that we had with Mark really about uh, marijuana and the do, fines. Do, and I don't know if we, do we need to do anything more with that or have we uh, resolved that for Mark? Huh? He was the one that raised the question. Yeah. yeah. So do we want to match that? Um, um, he, match he asked it me to, to the decide, alcohol. and I just didn't want to decide it, for all of us. So yeah. Uh, the only thing I think, and I'll talk to Mark about it, he, he mentioned that if uh, you couldn't have uh, um, it had to be a fixed amount. It, it couldn't up be to, a, up to, right. yeah. It's going to be a number. So, yeah. I, but then when he read the alcohol consumption one, it sounded like it was up to. Yeah, yeah. So, so. I'll check with him on that. Uh, but I, I, you, I think you basically agree that it should be tied in with the alcohol. Well, but it sounds like the alcohol one. I said the chief. I, I would yeah. go along with that. That's yeah. fine. Sounds like the alcohol once you get revised is what. Sounds like it may need to be if, if in fact that the, it must have been approved by the attorney general at one yeah. point, but. Yeah. Uh, so but it would, it would still make more things. sense to me to have a, a staggered set of, of, of penalties so that you can. I mean, Usually, as I say, yes, you just try yeah. to enforce compliance. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe what we could do is that perhaps maybe the next year maybe we need to change both of them to a stepped, you know, do them in, in concert with each other, a stepped thing. I don't know. I'd be interested to find out how many we have had citations issued yeah. for public consumption of alcohol. Yeah, probably but can't. Zero. But you yes, know but zero. Fees, so I don't think it's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, you know, no. <laughs> probably never, none, yeah. Never, yeah. Okay, good. Might um, be in the town report. Aren't yeah. there lists of those sorts of things? In that list, probably, yeah. 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 Um, so then we want just to discuss the parking license agreement uh, with Roach Brothers that you had sent around. Uh, this is the one the library trustees are basically, they've worked out with town council that there were two issues, as I recall. One of them had to do with the liability, and uh, Mark was working on that with the, uh, uh, with the Roach Brothers attorney, and he thinks that they were showing some signs of movement on that. Um, the other one, what was the other issue that was, um, they didn't, I think they didn't want employees parking there all day. Yeah. And so I think that's, they've been able to work those out. So basically the trustees are happy with, with what they and Mark have come to. Okay. I think they wanted your approval to go forward with this if they can resolve the, the outstanding issues. So, uh, if it's okay with you, uh, if you've read that and you agree with the basic principles of it, you want to vote to support it. Sure. We can let the trustees know. Yep, I would move to support the uh, parking agreement, parking license agreement as it as circulated. Yeah, I'll I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. Great. Well, that's good. It'd be good for them to get that settled and stuff as we're getting close. That's good. I understand that they are meeting with the board of health tomorrow. Okay. Roach Brothers people for the 
sanitary issues inside the building. So it seems to be moving along while they've started. Uh, I think the building inspector gave them permission to proceed with uh, uh, interior demolition work at their own risk because uh, it's still a 20-day appeal period. It should be up shortly, but yeah. I don't think it was up at the time. I know there's been some activity over there, but the question is, um, who is, and it's not the town, who is plowing the entire parking lot? It's being plowed. Hmm. Past two storms, the entire parking lot was plowed. Uh, Ken, Ken did look into that, was looking into that for me, and I, I don't know what he found out, but it's not the town. I think it was, it was a, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. very good, but it's nice. The whole lot is being plowed. Yeah, yeah. I'll check with him again and I'll find out, but it wasn't the town. Probably Roach Brothers is plowing. Probably Roach Brothers probably fed up with this, and they just probably want to get it plowed. Probably yeah, probably, so that they, well, they in case when well, they want to be ready to go, right? And they don't want to get yeah. there and find out that there's frozen. Frozen stuff. for the. I wouldn't be surprised if they just had someone come over and do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we okay. need uh, go, yeah, a vote to appoint uh, Willis Pelagian and Christian Carpenter, uh, both members of the Board of Water and Sewage, <coughs> to the Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund. Since they have a meeting tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, we'll be back on that tonight. <laughs> so <Yeah>. moved. Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, we have another Boy Scout thing. Invitation received from 210, 210 Eagle Scout Court of Honor for Andrew Wilitsky, uh, Sunday, March 23rd, United Church of Christ. So put that down. One right after another. Yeah, yeah. All righty, we've got a bunch of licenses and permits here. We've got the Medfield Music Association is requesting permission to place signs appropriating a music program to take place on Wednesday, March 19th in the high school auditorium. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Beginning Years Child Development Center Fundraising Committee requests a one-day wine and malt beverage permit for the silent auction to take place April 12th at the Zulo Gallery. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Norfolk Hunt Club is requesting a one-day wine and malt beverage permit for Thursday, May 22nd, and a common victuals license, I can't say that, permit in conjunction with the annual horse show on May 24th and 25th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Yep. Boy, they're um, far ahead. ahead of there. Far ahead. <laughs> May. Uh, the Zulo Gallery is requesting a one-day wine and malt beverage permit for the four first Thursdays, March 6th, April 3rd, May 1st, and June 5th. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Medfield High School Alumni Association requesting permission to place signs advertising the trivia night on Saturday, March 1st, 7 to 10 p.m. at the Beckwith Post, American Legion. Signs in place February 19th to March 1st. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Medfield State Hospital status update. Um, we've, it looks like we're taking a vote to sign a letter regarding notice of project change addressed to Deirdre Buckley, NEPA director. And uh, I guess that's our cover letter there. I'm not quite sure what all the details are regarding notice of project change. Do you, do you have any idea about that now? I know it's very, something about oh. a remediation plan, yeah. I guess they've changed a the remediation plan, significant improvement over the prior Yes, so I, I think, think yeah. I think we're just yeah. saying, Thank you, and we're supporting it. Thanks very much. Yes. And, uh, yeah. It, I think it's the changes that they negotiated with the committee. With the committee as and to, stuff like that, and we yeah. appreciate that, and I think we're all in favor. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I think we can maybe take a vote to sign that, and then if there's any issues, I'm sure the committee will. They did have, I think it was last week, was it, Evelyn? They had the meeting here, that monthly meeting they've been having, so I'm sure Chris will have an update on that okay. um, with uh, John O'Donnell and that group. They've okay. been meeting monthly, so. All right. So we'll take a vote on that. I would move that uh, we, we sign the uh, letter regarding notice of project change addressed to the MEPA director. Yeah. All in favor? All yep. Right. Can I just ask, well, yeah. on the, uh, the, the hospital, and actually I saw in your blog, uh, Pete, um, is there an update uh, as far as this, the state legislation dealing with the, with the water tower and the well fields that, that that's been delayed? Is that my understanding? Um, my understanding it had been reported out of all the committees. It was going to House Ways and Means, which I, uh, no, been uh, it was it was going to the the Senate floor, I think. But my understanding yeah, is, that if I if I read uh, Pete's blog correctly, that um, it's going to be delayed two weeks, and they're putting it back out to the other state agencies if if they want to make use of the land. Is that correct? That was what uh, John Harney reported uh, based on a phone call that he had made to Senator Timothy that it was supposed to have been voted on, I think, uh, on the, the House and Senate by last Thursday. Each of them were going to vote on Thursday, sequential Thursdays, and, and they haven't. 
Um, Senator, I guess, is a little embarrassed, uh, and apparently the the reason for the delay is is as John Harney reported that that they are offering it around to make sure that no other state agencies want these two pieces of land. The, this is the, the tubular well field that's off of Colonial Road between there and the railroad tracks and mm -hmm. the hunt club. And then the top water and then tower. The, and then the five or six acre uh, parcel for the replacement water tower. Yeah. I, this is I the land, th these are the lands that are coming to the town at no cost. Uh, the the uh, well field is basically underwater, so I don't think they'd have any use for that unless they want to put their own well in again. Um, so that shouldn't be a problem. The other one, it's to replace an existing tank. So it's just a little frustrating because this it's, it's since October. Right? Yeah, uh, it, it just takes so long. No, with the legislature, right? mm -hmm. Normally, yeah. that's a routine procedure that they yeah. do. I think they probably felt because they had done it ten years ago and no agency wanted it, they didn't have to go through it again. And probably somebody called them on that and decided they needed to go through it the again. The protocol again to kind of offer it out. Yes, yeah. yeah, so just yeah. And maybe a bigger issue on the whole site when the the uh, larger issue comes up of the purchase of the 134 acres. I, I just was hoping that this was settled before the town meeting. Mm -hmm. right, so. uh, yeah. The wheels of government grind slowly, I guess. Right. this yeah. There seem to be more important issues coming up for them these <laughs> days. <laughs> Um, the State Hospital Advisory Committee is requesting permission to post signs promoting the March 10th Special Town Meeting and also advertise a tentatively scheduled March 3rd, March 3rd Information Meeting. In addition to the four approved sign posting locations, they want to request the addition at the intersection of Ice House Road and West Street in front of the FAF Center and by the sliding hill at the hospital site. So moved. Um, second. All in favor? Yep. Aye. Aye. The, the issue, some of that with these uh, snow banks, I don't know, by the sledding hill, who they're going to do the Yeah, event. I'll have to kind of watch that and stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mike, in terms of uh, some of these things that uh, we're doing to get ready for the town meeting, the insurance is uh, certainly something that we need to make sure of uh, by the time we get to the March 10 town special town meeting. Right. Is mm -hmm. that something that, that you have a plan on how you're going to... I, I, have, I have a call into Maya who okay. provides your insurance coverage, and unfortunately with the weather, it's been a little bit difficult for them yep. to, so. Okay. Good. So that the insurance and then, and then the additional town costs that uh, yeah. we talked about. Additional town costs. That we need to do before the town meeting? Yes, uh, Stan and uh, 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 Frank Perry have been working on trying to put together some information on the sa what, what the value if they sold i believe it's 30 acres of land oh yeah uh, 20 acres of land they have been working uh very hard to to try to get a cost on that plus uh what the potential value of i think they went with 220 and 440 housing units Just to give what the like what the uh uh you might get from that from, for, for, for the sale taxes. of that. For, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, the, oh, oh, and also sale value? If it were to be sold to a developer, you know, if it would be parceled out to a developer oh, okay. for sale. One of the difficulties wow, that's is... Hard to do. Yeah, it, well, this has been difficult for them. They've been, as I say, they've been working pretty hard at it because, uh, you know, you have to say, well, how many of those units are going to be affordable? What type of units are they going to be rental? Are they going to be ownership? Uh, uh, you know, is it going to be, uh, for example, the 20 acres of housing, they were talking about putting 30 units on it, and 10 of them uh, were going to be, uh, I think, uh, duplex units with one bedroom. And Stan said, I don't think you could sell those. There wouldn't be a market for one bedroom units for sale, maybe for rent but not for sale. Right. And then the, the other 20 were two-bedroom units, and you said you might be able to sell two-bedroom units, uh, but you certainly couldn't sell one. So so they had a discussion, and they're, and they're trying to put... Right. Well, I think that would be good, just to give people a flavor and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Just, Again, you know, there are no right answers on this. There are only guesstimates and based on, yeah. uh, you know, and I think Stan and, and Frank are, are pretty good at, a pretty good team to put together some oh, figures yeah, on that type of, of stuff. There, so. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. so yeah, uh, we are. Yeah, excellent. So, so everything looks like it's going to falling into place. Other than for the yeah. March. Yes. 10 yes. 
not everyone will agree, but, you know, oh, no. that's... Well, so. Yeah, and it's too preliminary anyway. You just got to at least get the stuff out there. Yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. everybody's just going to... They're going to be different figures, and, and everybody's yes. just going to have to look at the basis for the figures that are presented and try to decide which yeah. ones are more reliable. Yeah. So, and the committee coalition figures have been all over the yeah. all over the map. Yes, they have been. Yeah, yeah. And how do you get a firm grasp on that? I mean, it's your guess is well. I think they're probably going to end up using the DCAM figures uh, yeah. as yeah, the I, basis for it. I so. mean, that's what I rely on. Is, is DCAM yeah. does this all the time, and they've given us yeah. figures for a lot of prevailing them. wage uh, demolition, non-prevailing wage, private right. party demolition. Yeah. And and if they do it all the time, it seems, and, and they do these types of buildings so it seems to me they're going to have a pretty good handle on it yep. uh, are they coming before our um, meeting next time to give us a report of their um their I, I believe they're having an informational meeting on march 30th on uh, march 3rd excuse me march 3rd and uh they are meeting um at the shirt committee the 27th they're taking a vote on the 27th as to whether yes. to recommend the uh, town yes. buy it or not. On the 24th, there's a few of them that are going to meet with Representative Dooley to uh, talk to him about State Hospital. They're, it's a Friday afternoon. They're going to meet here with him. So are they coming before this board to say his uh, recommendation? If 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 they have if if they can work it out, I they haven't asked to meet with the board, but uh, you know I'm sure they'd asking, like to. Yeah. Uh, at their meeting last Thursday, they were asking uh, when the selectmen were going to be meeting before the special town meeting. So I think yeah, they were yeah. planning on yeah. getting so that. Would be the first meeting and and I would say if they if it doesn't fit in, maybe you'd want to call a special meeting to meet with them just for that purpose. I mean that's what even if it isn't on a Tuesday, I think that's right. important enough to try to get a sense of where they're going because. Good. Yeah, I'm I sure you're going to be asked to tell me. I mean, we're going to be backing. Yes. Uh, and taking a vote on this as well, so I, I think it's important that they. Yes. Uh, yeah. Incidentally, fourth, uh, fourth, yeah. I would say probably the fourth. Hopefully, they can come and see us. I mean, our first. On the fourth, July, yeah, the that fourth. might be yes. Okay. So that would probably work out good. And, good. You know, good. And it would be after they would have their yeah. tentatively have their. Right, their open meeting on yeah. Monday the third. So that would probably work out. And and I did talk to the moderator last week. He's trying to make plans for what to do if they have an overflow crowd for the special. You know, he thinks that that might be the type of thing that will really bring people out of the woodwork to uh, come to a town meeting. So he's been talking to a DD at cable, to, and they said if they go live, they can show it on television in the cafeteria or in the auditorium. Um, so that people can listen to it if there's an overflow crowd. Uh, one of the things that I think you need to think about, and you don't need to make up your mind on this tonight, but I did say in, every once in a while the selectmen or the warrant committee have stepped down from the platform and to have a committee get up and, and sit there because they're going to be the ones that are going to be asked all the questions, and it's easier for... Uh, people to address the yes, questions to them. So, than us guests. so uh, I'll talk to Gus about it, and you know, you people might think about whether you would want to step down or try to put it in another table, because I'm sure there'll be questions asked for you people too. But um, but I think that's a very good point. Yeah, they should be up there. Yeah, maybe you just extend the uh, the platform. If they, yeah, if they can, that probably would make most sense. Uh, and and. Um, of course, well, I hope he's hoping Chris Allen will be available to uh, do the audio because he's so good at that. So, but uh, this it, with the special and the annual coming up so close together, I don't know what his travel arrangements are. He travels his. a lot. He's, he's yes. like magic with his uh, dealings. There. Yes. He does a good job. We couldn't afford to pay him for what he does for the town. So. Good. Excellent. He does that all on a, on a volunteer basis. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Um, Selectman's report, Pete. Uh, I had a conversation uh, with Roberta Lynch, Council on Aging uh, Director, about her 55 plus committee, and uh, I said that I would bring it up here and just check in. We, she had asked us to constitute a committee, um, and uh, we were going to get some input from Sarah, I think, uh, was the idea. But I know that, uh, that uh, Roberta is still interested in constituting that committee. Um, looking at okay, so uh, looking yeah, into yeah, 
housing needs. How to get some housing for 55. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So over um, people are. Okay. So I get, and Sarah's going to give us some feedback on that too, as far as how she thought the. Um, I don't know the. Uh, how that would be. I think that's yeah, where the way we left it the last time. Yeah. Was. yeah. So she can give us some input yeah. on how it should. Who, who, they go who, about addressing that, yeah. I did, I did talk to Sarah and Chris, yeah. and, um, and they, uh, they thought that it would probably be good to try to incorporate that into the housing plan that they've worked on, but oh, unfortunately yeah, that one left. Yeah, plan. they're trying to get that finished up, so they want to try to get that done and then maybe incorporate some of it into that. Is, would this be a separate committee, or, or should we try to uh, uh, have an existing committee take this on? Or uh? well, I think probably it, it depends on on what Roberta's talking about. I, I and from talking to Roberta, I suspect what they're looking at is housing. You know, they call it affordable housing for fifty five and older, but I don't think it's what the state calls affordable no, housing. It's market rate housing. This is for people who already own houses. Right and want to sell and downsize, and that's not considered affordable well, housing because they've already housing. owned a house and have equity in the house that yeah. they can put. They, they just don't want to put all the equity in their house into right. a, a retirement, a, you know, 55 and older unit. It's, it's actually a lot of the housing that, that we would probably want to have up at the state hospital site. Exactly, uh, yes, yes. Well, why don't we, uh, I would suggest that we uh, just ask that we plan on, on forming a committee to, to look into this then. Um, and invite Roberta and, and Tony Centauri, I know, was interested in it, uh, and any other people that they have. And, and we can ask any, any of the residents in town that are interested in getting involved to, to give us their names, and they can get, become part of it as well. Does that make sense? Um, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have no problem with that. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it. Uh, from past experience, it seems that if you limit the size of the committee to no more than seven, I think you know a lot of the committees uh, started out bigger and ended up. You know, I'm thinking of the uh, code of the uh, town charter study committee. Yeah. Uh, started out with I think Eight. around ten or something, and it's now down to a quarter of about six people that are working yeah, on it. They started it. eight. Yes. Eight. Yeah. The energy committee started around twelve. They're down. Well, yeah, yeah, they're down considerably, yeah. Uh, and uh, the state hospital advisory committee is huge. That's twelve or something. Yeah, yeah that's fifteen, I think, 15. Uh, <laughs> that that are on it. But I don't know uh, what they the regular to attendance the is. Room once, and it was really tight. Jim, in yeah, I bet, yeah, yeah. Um, I had my. Can I just say you're not having uh, uh, you're separating Sarah from this committee, right? This would be a separate committee that would be formed. From the housing production plan, yeah, I think yeah. probably it would, yeah. We keep yeah. giving Sarah so many things. Well, exactly. Yeah. Well, exactly. I would think that Sarah would be interested in, in being part of it. I mean, I don't know whether, well, I don't know. I don't know. Well, she can maybe, maybe we can find out. She, well, we really don't want her. She could probably be a resource to them, yeah. Yeah, because she's going to. Consult into an advisor. Yeah, because she's got the, if, you know, if the state hospital goes through, oh, my God, you know what I mean? You, we, you know, going to have our hands full, you know what I mean? She'll have her hands full. She had her hands full on Friday. She had to teach me how to send an electronic application into the state. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talk about hopeless. So Man. she can. I, I, w I wouldn't want to commit her to anything, but she could maybe be an advisory role. But I wouldn't want her to have to be the one that's going to schedule should, the meetings and take yeah. the minutes and all that other stuff. I mean, they should I think certainly they should, ask her yeah, if she wants to be involved. She wants to participate. Yeah, um, I I commit her to that. I did have my uh, my first Friday of the month's office hours mm -hmm. at the at the uh, center last. Last, well, was it last week? I don't know. It was some recently. Um, the Benfield Foundation had a meeting and uh, and and made its. There was a report on the Angel Run, and the good news about the Angel Run was that it uh, it generated a, a goodly return this year, and and the reason that's good for the town is that those monies that that are raised go to Medfield families in need, mm -hmm. um, and so that there's a good amount of money for the uh, to get used for that purpose. Um, the decision was made on the uh, Volunteer of the Year. Uh, Andy Thompson was actually selected uh, for the Lifetime Achievement Award, and a Andy did know about that before he died, so that was good. And, uh, and the Volunteer of the Year and the Youth Volunteer of the Year will be announced later this week. Excellent. Um, the Energy Committee uh, met and discussed uh, the Green Communities Act plan, Fred, mm -hmm. Fred Bunger had a very well detailed out plan as to the steps to go forward to the town meeting on that. They also discussed the 
uh, grant that uh, Fred Davis has gotten from for a consultant to advise them on photovoltaic solar siting in town. Mm -hmm. They've got three or four sites that they're allowed to have the consultant advise on. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, State Hospital Advisory Committee met last week, and they were basically reviewing on Thursday night the uh, the flyer that mm -hmm. they that they have now uh, sent to the printer apparently. Um, and it's the it's a it's a I think it'll be an, uh, an 11 by 17, uh, so it's a four-page sort of uh, flyer, uh, mm -hmm. like what they had at the visioning session uh, mm -hmm. to explain the issues uh, in, in sort of a, a summary Good. fashion. Yeah. Is this going to be mailed to every home or given out of town meeting? Or? It's going to be mailed to every home. Yeah, every home. And I, I think one of the issues they were debating is uh, how to present both positions in that brochure, yep. uh, majority and minority position uh, on the different issues. So, because uh, I don't think it's going to be a unanimous vote of the committee. That was part of the issue at the, at, the, um, at the meeting on Thursday night was that the, there was disagreement about what the, what the positions the, the, should the brochure probably, should yeah. say. Of course. Yeah. So. Yeah. 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 It's not easy. <laughs> so uh, there was, it was kind of a, We'll pick some of these and some of these. and Well, in, yeah. in the brochure that was mailed out, for example, for the uh, DPW garage, did we have a, a minority report on that that was mailed out? No, there was, wasn't a minority. The committee agreed unanimously to recommend it. But uh, in this case, that's not the case as I understand it. So. Doesn't so sound if, like if from the DPW, if the, if it wasn't a, a, a unanimous decision, there would have been a minority uh, thing on the uh, handout. I guess uh, uh, it could have been. You know, I I know under the charter, for example, if more than three members, if three or more members of the warrant committee vote opposite the rest of the committee, they must by uh, give a minority report. That's mm -hmm. just for the warrant committee, though, right? Yes. Yeah. So you don't have to do it, but I believe that was the discussion as to whether they should or not. Yeah, I they I wasn't I, I missed the very beginning of their meeting. So they might have had a discussion about whether they were how they were going to do it. But when I got there uh, five or minutes into the meeting or so, they were already in the process of, of vetting the wording of it, and and they didn't there hadn't seemed to have been a discussion about whether there should be two separate documents. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so what they did seem to craft was one document that attempted to include Just both sides, yeah. pieces yeah. from both sides. Yeah. Hmm. Well, yeah, because it's it in order to, to get it out for the town meeting, to get a mailing out and get it printed and mailed yep. and everything, it's got to be quick turnaround time. So. Yeah, and if anybody wants to see it, I posted it on my blog this week, so it's there already if you want to take a look. And that's it. Okay. Uh, Richard. A um, couple things. One, uh, w actually, I should have asked Mark when he was here before, but uh, when we had the discussion uh, on the bylaws with Mark, uh, were we going to set up, was, was it Sarah that was going to set up a um, either a bylaw committee? We also talked about a workshop. Uh, is there any follow-up on that? I, I think you had asked Mark to take charge of, of reviewing the bylaws as a project for as town council. You voted that uh, uh, several meetings ago. So it's, and, it's and under his was, umbrella then? then yes. He's, yeah. he's okay with that. He okay. suggested, he did suggest a, a workshop. It seems to me that's the type yes. of thing that we could do maybe after town meeting. Right, we uh, talked about the entire quiet area. Okay, that's so right. he's, he's, he's going to take care of that. Yeah. Yes. Well, town well I don't know yeah. that he is, but. Yeah. Well, I think, didn't he say he'd be willing to run the workshop? Yeah, yeah. but I think, I don't yeah. think he's going to initiate it, so. Yeah. Well, would be my guess, but taken care of. I, yeah. I think you asked him to if he wants. That's how he wants to handle it. But that's up to him. You asked him to handle it. So yeah. okay, I, I just was unclear on that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I talked to Roland uh, Lavelle, who's the uh, the engineer. Lavelle. Lavelle, thank you. Um, and he said that um, we had talked about uh, the uh, the. Um, the railroad tracks that go over Farm Street and Harding Street, uh, that's discontinued. In fact, that's the route they're talking about for the rail trail. Right. And I've, I've received several uh, concerns from people that live in the north end of town that have to keep going over those, those tracks. 
can they be removed uh, to make it a smooth run through that? And he, we have to go through the MBTA, correct? And he said that MBTA is willing, uh, we would need a letter from the Board of Selectmen uh, requesting uh, that the uh, railroad crossing, the tracks at Harding Street and Farm Street be removed. I talked to the chief of police and he's okay with that. His issue on Farm Street was you have that uh, double dip, almost the roller coaster right. effect. He would not want that roller coaster effect change because he feels it slows the traffic oh, down. But he did agree that removing the tracks uh, also would be a safety thing because he feels kids going over on bicycles and motorcycles, particularly uh, on the on the smooth track, uh, they flip or they they skid off a little bit as you hit on that. So um, we would need a letter. Um, and Roland must have the correct source of who was supposed to write. Yeah. Through, but he said he talked to him, and, and they were in agreement with that. Um, who is? M uh, MBTA. MBTA, yeah. You know who used to be with the company that managed the, the re real estate for the MBTA was Raina Rubin. Oh, well, but she she's moved, moved out of town, yeah. yeah. She moved, yeah but she, she was with that Cambridge company. Or Boston or yeah, yeah. Denham, I think. Um, the... Uh, I, I don't think that will stop your complaints because the complaints usually are about people bottoming out, which usually is a result of too much speed. They're going and too fast. Street anyways, yeah. yeah. Um, so it, even if you remove the tracks, it's not going to solve the problem. Uh, and I agree with the chief. You don't want to take that bump out because you'll have more accidents at Farm and North. The problem is I, I people. I think that should stay. The, the only yeah. thing that should be uh, is is the uh, the railroad tracks themselves. Well, we'd had a discussion with that, I think at Ken quite a while ago, and he, and he, and they would be able to to try to regrade that slope as a big production. You know, if you had to, yeah, you know, and and you know. But I, I, I think that's what the chief doesn't want to do that. Oh, he no, I know. No, yeah, definitely. He wants to but keep on top it, yeah. of that, it's, it's hard to do anyways. You, it is. You've you got retaining walls. It's a major project. It's a major yeah, project, yeah. Right. which you wouldn't want to do anyways because yeah. it's no. very expensive. Right. Uh, right. But right. you couldn't do it without removing the tracks right. because yeah. Yeah. you want the train to be level, so you got to have that level space. Yeah. So. Yeah. So well, that would be great if, if, if they you could get those um, tracks out. If you could find who we write it to and then a letter, I guess we would have to, at a future meeting, sign it. Okay. That'd be great. And with letters, can we put uh, either a letter or maybe Mike? Um, I think you had some discussion uh, on the Montrose School. I, in walking by the the Cushman House, um, the, the windows is windows broken. Um, rain and snow. Birds are getting in there. And didn't we have some discussion with Montrose in, in relation yeah, with the, the gymnasium? Um, Yes, they were going to, uh, they'd agree they'd restore the outside of the building, so I'll check with them. Can we check I because uh, there's... Yeah. Uh, I think they ran us some soil contamination problems with the building that probably cost them a lot of money, so that may have... I mean, even if they just repair some the broken it, yeah. windows. Yeah, um, okay. Especially in this, in this time period. Um, this uh, idea, I brought up a couple of uh, meetings ago. Um, a couple of people were interested in the this plastic bag banning. And at first they didn't have, uh, there was like two people. I, I've since have a number of other people that are willing to serve on such a committee. And I know it, I talked a little bit with Mike, or actually via email, just kind of a philosophical. M my guess is all the people that want to be on it are in favor. Uh, so we the one be in plastic bags well, altogether. Well, it depends on how we want to um, um, guide them of what their their task would be. Uh, I think it could be education. I had a couple of people said, "Why don't you try a voluntary uh, system first to, to get a hold of CVS, get a hold of Shaw's, which are probably the two largest mm -hmm. distributor of plastic bags, and see if you can work something out with them." So. The charge may be uh, to explore ways to, um, to, to best to reduce. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the future may be they want to maybe uh, at the, a year from now uh, have some kind of an article at town meeting. Uh, I had read uh, last time it was uh, Brookline and there were several other communities. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I don't know which way they would go, um, 
But in, in discussion with Mike, um, it was just a feeling, you know, should you have people that are opposed to that mm -hmm. as well as people in support? Right. And, and my philosophy just a little bit was on something like that, like we have the rail trail committee. I don't think we have people opposed to right. the rail trail on that to balance that. Uh, or the energy committee, people that don't believe in global warming, do you right. balance that? Um, and, and you may want to speak a little bit on that, Mike. But no, well, I, it probably, I, was, I thought about it over the weekend. I said, I suppose it depends on what you name the committee. If you call if the committee to ban plastic bags, <laughs> then you would, it, we would naturally want to put people who wanted to ban plastic bags. Right. If you wanted to call the committee to study the issue of... of plastic bag regulation, then, then you would uh, have a more diverse group that aren't necessarily, have, haven't necessarily formed their opinions yet. Or if you're trying to do an education, then maybe you want to involve, you know, Shaw's or CVS or Roach Brothers and put someone from, ask them to, to appoint someone to the committee. Uh, I, I think it depends on what you're what your mission statement is basically what you expect the committee is it going to be educational is it going to encourage people to discourage the use of plastic bags or is it going to, uh, I, don't, to I don't know I don't, I don't have all the knowledge so I think part yeah. of it this this committee would would explore um, you know, the, the background the the environmental concerns the uh, energy concerns the um, the economic concerns and and come back with some type of statement. Uh, it, I, I, I brought that up when there was a number of communities at uh, Brookline, Lexington, um, that actually banned the, 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 the usual suspects. <laughs> I didn't yeah. say Cambridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amherst. Well, Am how, how, Amherst. How do you guys feel whether you have to actually yeah. balance that or? Well, yeah, it? no, I think that's a good point. If you were, I mean, if, if, if the committee's looking to ban plastic bags, we don't need a committee. Then you just put a Warren article on, and the town can vote whether they want to ban plastic bags or not. I mean, you don't have to study it. I mean, if the people don't want, you know, if, if that's what the committee's going to do, it's like, well, they already know what they want to do. You know what I mean? But if they're interested in reducing the use of plastic bags and educating people on that, I mean, that, I think, I would be in favor of that. If it's just to ban plastic bags, you don't need a committee. We just... Throw an article on next year and see if right. the town wants to vote to be in plastic bags and call it a day. You know, it's well, nothing I, more I complicated think, than I, that. I think yeah. we should look at other. Maybe there's some voluntary ways. There's yeah. some education to the schools. Yeah. Um, maybe at the end that would be their recommendation. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you feel, Peter, I'm just philosophically. I, well, I hate those plastic bags. I hate seeing them everywhere. In the, like they're just they're stuck in community. trees, and they seem to, I mean, they're, they probably have a half-life of a million years. Um, and, and they're hard to recycle. I mean, you have to specifically take them back to the spot at Shaw's is what I do with them. Um, but um, I think it's a good idea to have, have a committee look into how to deal with them. I, my office at Newton is right across the street from Whole Foods, and so I'm always over at Whole Foods buying lunch stuff, and, and they don't have plastic bags at all. So they've obviously figured out a way to, to, to work around plastic bags. Um, I, I would think that if we have a committee that, that is looking into the issue, that I would invite somebody from Shaw's, Roach Brothers, and CVS to, yep. to be part of the group. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I have uh, three adults and um, and uh, uh, four uh, high school seniors that um, that sent uh, information that they would be willing to serve on. And maybe uh, the first thing uh, I can ask them to come into the next meeting. Um, maybe the first thing my charge is is to see if they can contact someone from Shaw's Roach Brothers and CBS to see if sure. they can get a representative. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, what we found before is you're better to put sophomores or juniors on the committee. I'm sorry. You're better to put sophomores or juniors. The seniors, by the time the oh, committee gets going, are yeah. they're well, gone. Again, I, yeah. these are just people that came forward. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, soliciting. Yeah. Um, okay. Good. Um, I, I'm very happy. I, I, the first um, Thursdays, I think, uh, are beginning a nice tradition in midfield. And I mentioned the... Um, First Parish Church now does a last Monday, mm -hmm. uh, and they're actually having on February 24th uh, this Rick Cutler, who is coming to speak on global warming and climate change. Mm -hmm. 
and I attended the Hannah Adams Club has a lecture series. Uh, just it was great. It was on Eleanor Roosevelt, mm -hmm. uh, and it was just very well done. So I went to that. I also attended and presented uh, from the board the certificate to uh, Father Owens at uh, St. Edward's yeah, on yeah. his Golden Jubilee. They had, they had uh, over 800 people there, which was nice. Um, he actually, because of the um, combining of the two parishes, he actually will be leaving Midfield uh, in June. Are they going to change the name? No. Each yeah. will be this. They'll, they'll keep, keep the same, same name. Huh? They'll keep the same. Um, do you know on, on the Roach Brothers uh, sidewalk, I think um, they're underway with that, but a meeting was going to be set up this week. Do you know anything about that? I think there was until all the snowstorms, but, uh, yeah, so let me. If you could check on that. Um, I met with a number of neighbors uh, on Oak Street, Pleasant Street, concerned about, um, I call them double houses, where you have, because of the zoning, you have one house, and if they put a small attachment or garage or breezeway, you can then, we're beginning to see a number of those uh, in Medfield. And there's one that's uh, scheduled for Oak Street, and they're going to have to go before the zoning board. Uh, but there's just a lot of concerns on the zoning, and maybe um, during the summer or something, we can begin to look at uh, some of these concerns with the, one of the individuals called it the Needhamization of Midfield. Um, I attended the um, highway garage meeting. Um, in spite of all this very cold February and, and snowy month there, um, things are happening down there. Mm. They got the roof on the office. Uh, they feel that by uh, halfway through March, they'll have all the roofs on there. Okay. And then they can actually, uh, part of the problem was it's so cold they had to be able to uh, put heaters in there right. in order to begin to do some of the, the work inside. Um, so that's, that's progressing. Um, I attended the uh, community to study memorials. Uh, all their new signs are in. Mm -hmm. I mentioned before they resemble those that are at the Bob Norton mm -hmm. and will replace all the other um, honor and civic mm -hmm. squares that are around town. Um, they did say that on May 24th, they'll have a letter here to this board, uh, they will officially dedicate um, the uh, Snyder Road and Lee Road. Uh, George Snyder was killed in the uh, Korean War, Earl Lee uh, in World War II. Yep. Um, and they voted to support um, the so-called park, uh, park Committee's decision uh, be it a Fisk or Straw Hat Park. Right. Okay. So whichever one yep. comes out, I think that voting goes through Friday mm -hmm. uh, yeah. on that. They also voted, and because town meeting is closed, they'll put off for a year, but uh, they did vote to um, name the intersection of Emerson Road and Footlock Lane the Paul Curran Civic Square. Uh -huh. after Paul Curran. Mm. That's very nice. Um, and probably they'll look, as Paul was also uh, in, uh, in World War II and uh, was very much involved during D-Day activities and mm. about maybe uh, a year from now. And they also looked at um, the conservation land that Barbara Layton uh, donated to the town, I believe, back in the 1970s, uh, uh -huh. to na name that the Barbara Layton Conservation Preserve, and that's the area of Rocky Lane, Lakewood. And that will be a year from this town meeting, but they wanted to just get that out. Yeah, that would be a nice thing to do, yeah. Yeah. How big a parcel is that? Seven acres. Oh. Yeah. They, um, it's actually where they used to cut the the millstones for the grist mills yeah. and there's actually you can see some where they cut the the millstones out of the rock, rock. So, yeah. nice. she said that the, the reason the family got the land in the beginning was that during the great depression her father got that land to cut the wood for to burn at their home for heat oh, okay yep mm. yeah she went down with them i just wanted to thank uh, verizon i have a meeting tomorrow at 10 um, w once a month with the utility groups at but I just want to thank Verizon. Uh, they removed that uh, utility box, which I always thought was a, uh, a, a safety concern, on South Street by... Um, Nowood by Road, Hall, down. Nowood Road. Yeah. Uh, it was about waist high, uh, and they moved that up. And they also removed, uh, repainted the graffiti that was on their box at the intersection of South and Luffler. So just thank you to Verizon uh, for that. Um, I'm going to meet uh, next Monday with the selectmen in Millis, and then I have one, I believe, with Medway 
Um, but I'm not sure if any others have responded. Um, but what I'm, I'm looking at, uh, I've discussed before, is to see ways that um, the communities uh, around Medfield uh, can cooperate with each other. And for lack of a, of a name, I'm calling it um, information on services, equipment. Um, I'm reading right in here. And sharing, okay. Information, services, equipment sharing uh, of what we can do in Midfield uh, with other towns. Uh, one for information, just to find out, you know, what's the way they deal with their permits? What's the way they deal with collecting dog licenses? Um, what are the different things that maybe we can learn from each other? Maybe someone has a, a, a better way to do something. Services, um, our veteran agents, tree wardens, sealers, uh, mm -hmm. Is there a way maybe we can combine and save some money uh, and make it more efficient? Um, and then equipment, uh, you know, I don't know, street sweepers. Are, are there certain things that we buy that we can share with other towns? And um, what, if, what I'm going to suggest is that uh, each town appoint one member uh, to serve on this group that can meet however often they feel necessary. Um, and then I would like to see if uh, one thing out of this, if maybe mm -hmm. once a year we have some type of a, of a call to social, maybe at the Dwight Derby House, where the different selectmen come in. I went for the first time to the MMA meeting and just, I just got a lot talking to other selectmen from some mm -hmm. other towns, uh, in addition to how much money they made. Sense. I know, I know. But, um, I'm really interested in that. So. It's just good to, to listen uh, to what uh, other selectmen are doing in other communities, and I, right now we're, we're isolated. We don't talk to Millis and Medway. And, mm -hmm. Well, I think you guys do with the town administrators and stuff, but outside of the MMA, yeah. uh, and, and I didn't get to meet any of the selectmen in nearby towns mm -hmm. you know, with Medfield. So that was kind of my goal uh, on that. So over the next couple of months, hopefully um, all the different selectmen uh, in the other communities uh, will respond and give me a chance to, uh, to meet with them. I wanted to just mention on March 1st, the uh, Medfield High School Alumni Association is having their third annual trivia night. Um, they give three different scholarships. Uh, mm -hmm. That it's a it's a good cause. Um, in addition to um, going to uh, Andy uh, Thompson's wake, which clearly uh, is going to be a loss for the community. I also went to, um, if you remember, uh, Sandra Muncy who was actually the first female selectman in the town of Midfield uh, back in the 1970s. Her uh, husband, Don, died, uh, well, and I went to that, uh, that way. Um, and just one last thing, um, in light of the snow we're having uh, right now in my walks um, around town, I, I see a lot of neighbors that are making the effort to shovel out uh, the, the, the fire hydrants, but there's a lot of fire hydrants now that are submerged, you can't even mm -hmm. see on the snow banks. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to get very mild uh, the end of this week and with rain and the catch basins that people, and, and they have the lines painted on the street so you can see where those catch basins are. So just the thing to the, to the public, if you have a fire hydrant or catch basin near your home, if you could shovel that out, it helps you, your neighbors, and the fire department in the town of Midfield. I shovel mine out, but the trouble was you get down to the street level and it was ice, yeah. and you couldn't. I had an ice chopper yeah. out trying to cut through it. I, even with an ice chopper, I couldn't cut it through. Yeah, And the water couldn't get up over that little hunk of ice. So. Yeah. Oh. And that's all, Mr. Chairman. Good. Thank you. Um, just we had just had a, I think we had an Eagle Scout ceremony. I think we went to Pete, didn't we? The, um, we did. Since the last meeting, yeah, February 8th. So. Another one, right? Every couple of, every month or so. That's right. Same there were two, uh, yeah. two scouts. Yeah, it was excellent. We had a nice, How did that nice go? ceremony. Good. It was very good. Yeah, it was very good. Yeah. The uh, United Three Church scouts. of Christ. Three scouts. Yeah, United Church of Christ. So that was, that was good. Was um, good. Yeah. Incidentally, there's one item on the informational list you ought to be aware of because there, I think there's a lot of opposition shaping up to it. It's the last item. Time Warner Cable. Oh, merge with Comcast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they've announced a merger with Comcast, and that would be the two largest cable companies uh, or, or maybe the largest telecommunications and the largest cable company would be merging. No, it's the two largest cable companies, Comcast and, and uh, Time Warner. 
and it would give them an enormous market power. Sure. How do we keep getting all these monopolies when I thought that was something that we... Yeah. Too big to fail? Is that is that going to be in cable too? Yeah. <laughs> so. Excellent. Good. It's crazy. I, you know, I think it's too much lobbying in Washington. Mm -hmm. They're throwing too much money around down there. I thought, we had, you know, our history is we had a lot of legislation to break up so we didn't have big monopolies, but it seems... What goes around comes around, I guess, huh? Yes. But I, I think that's something that probably needs some watching because that could affect people's cable rates and right. choices uh, or options for service in the future. So it certainly will go up. Yeah. Now I think it never goes down. Never yeah. goes down. Excellent. Good. Yes, the, the level of service goes down. <laughs> yeah, the, the price goes price up. Hey, thank you.